All right, here we go. Week number eight. The final regular week of the KCM for season three, 2024. We're starting off with Mighty versus Barracks. We've got all new maps here, so let's get started. Deja Vu. Does this bring you back, Shun? Bring you back to the old days? <laughs> Yeah, it, it does. I like to see the, the maps of old, especially maps like Monty Hall that give you such crazy games. It's nice to see a little blast from the past and uh, some weird lineups, I have to say. Like, Zerg's looking really strong. Terra's looking pretty strong, but a weird lineup from Protoss here. Mini Mighty Miss. I'm not even sure who Miss is. There's a Chinese StarCraft 2 player called Miss, but I doubt this is him. Yeah, I doubt that very much. I uh, tried to look up Miss before the cast and wasn't able to find any information on Wikipedia. Of course, I didn't um, translate the name and try to look for it on, on Korean sites, but I assume this is just a fill-in for the Protoss squad. Last week, uh, we were missing one player, and I found out a little bit after the cast that it was because of the Collegiate League was having a, an event at the same time, and most of those Protoss uh. players were tied up with that big event so here's me thinking they it. just brought in miss to make up the m, &M show all these players beginning with them <laughs> yeah the m, &M, m show here guess who's back baby cross map now mighty top left hand corner barracks in the bottom right um talking about this map it's a glitch in the matrix every time that there is a an event of deja vu but yep. this this map is uh pretty normal in comparison to some of the other weird maps that we've got in the pool yeah i mean it's, it's, it's similar to retro in the sense that you've got these 12 bases around the map then you've got this mineral only in the middle that you can take as terran maybe and uh but i i don't know I, it's a very strange high to low ground transition ring in this center of the board which does change things drastically compared to maps like retro so i'm not sure how that will affect the pushing through the center of the map for terran there is still that high ground to go up onto so ways to slow down the terran's advance like on apocalypse for example yeah, for sure. There's a third base that's pretty far away from the natural, but uh, one advantage of that third base for Terran is that it kind of surrounds your main. So you can set up a really nice defensive position on three bases. Might be a bit harder to take a fourth, though. You have to kind of push through the middle of the map. And uh, like you said, lots of high and low ground transitions. Those can be very punishing for a Terran push. Oh, absolutely. I'm curious if we'll see a, some Reaver base play out on Mighty, what kind of style he's going to elect to go for against Barracks. Now, Barracks is not uh, a Terran versus a Protoss specialist in any sense of the word. I think he's got one of the weaker records at around 30 or so percent in the ASL. Still quite competent, like you'd expect from any person capable of making it into the ASL. But yeah, I think uh, this is slightly going to be a Mighty favored match here. But I, I definitely think that Barracks is capable of taking down a caliber player like Mighty, though. Oh, for sure. For sure. Barracks, I mean, we've seen him flop uh, against players like Snow, but there's no comparison with someone like Mighty. Um, these two guys should be very evenly matched. We're pulling the boys, though, Shun. Going across the map, we're not happy about this uh, Nexus first that got taken by Mighty a little earlier. Yeah, I mean... I kind of like to see it, honestly. I was actually just speaking to Love Snow recently, and I was even mentioned pulling the boys earlier, so I'm kind of happy to see that happening in this game. Um, it can be very strong. We do have the shield battery response from Mighty. You do kind of need a shield battery in these situations, but he's not going to have a lot of units to defend this. Just one single Zealot and maybe two Dragoons. Only one Dragoon is even finished right now, already laying down a bunker in front of that gate. We're not going to be able to get that bunker up, so I have to cancel that, but still, I think there's enough units here to, to bully this back. The second Dragoon is just so slow. Probe Drill going to be coming through. Does manage to get some connection on those Marines. Takes out one of them. SCP's currently body blocking for the Zealot and Dragoon, so they can't really get in here to clear up these Marines and Vulture. So a lot of damage being done to Mighty. He's going to have to evacuate the Natural at least. We'll get this bunker up potentially behind the Shield Battery. Eventually maybe getting the Nexus here. And this could be a nice little bit to win for Barracks. Wow, a lot of probes have gone down. Generally, you got to make a choice. 
between uh, abandoning the abandoning the nexus and saving the probes, or throwing the probes in and abandoning the nexus. And I don't think he's done either here. He's lost all the probes, and it looks like he may end up losing the nexus now. That was very close. He almost managed to kill off that vulture. And the marines are filling this bunker. But I don't know if he can actually hit with the bunker onto the nexus. Is that within range or is that just a low priority for the marines? Uh, that's just a low priority, I think, for the issue here right now. Yeah, I think they are capable of hitting that nexus. But unfortunately, it will be some time before they are even targeted onto that. So this might be enough time for Mighty to actually get the range finish and eventually pick this up. There are three SEVs to repair, and they do kind of have a safe angle to repair. Ooh, one of the Dragoons actually goes down. It changes the mathematics just a little bit here, so we will be able to keep this bunker alive for quite some time. Another one goes down. Ooh, okay. This is, this is getting interesting because the gateway is going to fall in a second as well. So then most of the DPS will be onto the Nexus in a second here. So maybe, maybe, just maybe there's enough DPS here to pull this off. Yeah, maybe he runs in, drops some mines in front of those Dragoons. Try to stop him from fighting for just a moment. That one Dragoon at the top is really low, but both of the Vultures do die. You need one SCV per Dragoon to keep this... Uh, bunker alive and we've been having four dragons hitting this for quite some time so eventually it will go down it's just will it be down in time the nexus is getting lower a tank is on the way that tank could come in and start to target down some of the lower dragons there goes the bunker and he will have to retreat only 400 hp though left on that Tank is going to come up here, try to harass the Dragoons. We know there's no Observer out just yet. Oh, the Mind Drag is insane. Oh, that could have just won the game for Mighty. That was absolutely nuts. I was, I was thinking to myself, it's kind of crazy that Barracks is even thinking about standing here and just trying to skirmish with the Dragoons. He just was kind of banking on those mines going his way in the trade and it completely was the opposite end of that spectrum and he took on the worst trades possible absolute devastation from that spider mine and barracks now like only barely starting to get his um, natural expansion finished up while mighty's already mining happily away yeah this is a little bit of a rough position for barracks he did kill a lot of probes during that fight though so i'm not sure exactly how this maths out could be a big barracks advantage it could be a small mighty advantage i'm not sure what we're looking at right now um the tech of course is very late for mighty he doesn't have his observer out just yet okay maybe first one coming out right now he's trying to clear these mines with just pure finesse at the moment pretty crazy he will eat that mine no he walks right into it and it doesn't go off there you go you don't even need micro to kill the mine sometimes you just get lucky <laughs> yeah seems like it uh, yeah it's kind of wild honestly like I, I'm a little bit, I was a little bit worried there for a second I thought that barracks maybe was like at a point of just throwing the game straight up it looks like we will see some stabilization though barracks did do a lot of damage to mighty it has to be said like initially that started off with a lot of probes going down so even though I was not successful in killing the nexus and I would still say this is a little bit of an advantage to mighty overall I would say the the game state has reset just kind of like been rescinded down to like everything being slow relative to a minute or so so, and I think we might see a fairly standard game out of both players for the time being. It looks like Mighty might be gearing up to go uh, straight into Arbiters from here. Maybe to do a bit of Gateway Man. I'm not too sure. Yeah, what do you think would be strong on this map, considering like the, the layout here? Is it better to go Arbiters, or do you think that shuttle play is going to be stronger? Yeah, I'm not too sure, actually. I'm kind of undecided on that, um, thinking about it. I was kind of doubting myself as I was saying it. Uh, I kind of, I want to say Arbiters would be really good on this map, but I also feel like just straight up Gateway Man could be highly abusable in the center of the map with just the, the high to low ground transitions. And just, yeah, the Zealot Bombs and whatnot could be devastating as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not too sure. I feel like the buildable terrain all the way around the front of like between the natural and the third makes it so yeah. that you can place enough turrets to probably keep arbiters out late game from you know going after your base uh, after your main base but uh taking a fourth on this map is going to be really tough for Terran, right you have to extend yourself yeah. way way out in order to get one of those 
And right. that's when Arbiter play becomes really annoying, right? They can hit your outlying bases whenever you're trying to attack them and keep just harassing that fourth over and over again, preventing you from holding yeah. that. Absolutely. And if you've watched Nartosa's stream, you know that no matter how many turrets you make, the Arbiter still gets in one way or another. Barracks getting a little bit of a vulture run by on the third base. We'll sneak into this pocket to maybe get two or three probe kills here, which is not too bad. Um, it's not like the best of them trades to be honest but like as long as he's not at risk of just like getting a counter attack it's not too bad to trade some vultures or probes here and there so mighty is gonna go for his arbiter play and yeah, uh that. starting out with a pretty good position if mighty can take down barracks here we might not be having uh you know the the series that we were expecting i think we were both expecting zerg and Terran to take the first and second place uh, in this in this week and there's a potential there for an uh, uh, stalemate in terms of the number of oh my gosh that mine connection nice kill there with the dt uh, i was just trying to say there is a chance that we could see a, a stalemate in this last week of kcm with both players uh, getting caught up on points and in that case we have no idea what's going to happen it's all up to Terran, though, taking uh, second place and Zerg taking first place, and then we'll see what happens. Here we've got Barracks pushing in with these tanks, but he doesn't have a lot of... Oh my gosh, okay, the mine actually picked that off. That was a waste of a scan, and there's going to be an Arbiter out here in a moment. This has kind of gone all to plan for Mighty. He's going to come yep. forward with a bunch of invisible units shortly. He could probably break this. He's not actually going to wait for this Arbiter. Instead, thinking that he's just got enough, he's probably right. Yeah, I think so, and I really do like this Arbiter play from him, because Barracks is like straight up 5 factory right now. He's kind of anticipating like Ariva builds and trying to squash it, or maybe a 3 base carrier play and trying to squash that before that gets off the ground. But no, it's going to be a straight up Arbiter play, and that's actually going to counter what Barracks is doing really nicely. After holding this push without even requiring to utilize his Arbiter tech, he's not going to have a lot of scans available to him as well, and sometimes just the cloak utility of that Arbiter is enough to be a nightmare for the Terran player having to constantly scan, not just to identify identify where the, the Protoss expansions and army locations are, but also having to constantly scan the army when you're engaging it, just to see what you're shooting at. Yeah, those scanners came up so late, he was already on the attack path before he was uh, able to, to get scouting in the main, and I don't think he even scanned the main, because he's saving those scans for the DTs that were walking around the map. Just a classic... Oh, ho, ho, that mine. A classic Protoss play. Oh, wait, 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 he's getting in. Oh my gosh, that pylon was so low. Just about 3 HP left on that. He's going to get in here, kill so many probes. This could really switch things back for Barracks. He lost so much of his army, but he kills a ton of probes. He's going to dive in even further, killing off more probes. Mighty cancelled his own wall so the vultures could just chase down all the probes. I have no idea why he cancelled his own wall there. That was absolutely maddening because he needed he needed to keep the wall alive to keep the vultures out from chasing down all the probes. I don't know why he did that. A little bit of a botch maneuver from Mighty, and now even though the supplies kind of indicate like a pretty sizable protos lead, he's trying to come back in here for some more probe kills. Unsuccessful in that attempt, but now I would say that kind of resets the balance of power a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say that Barracks is in an advantage right now, but that's certainly giving him a lot more playability in this game going forward absolutely yeah you're totally right why on earth did he cancel these pylons on the right hand side of this base like those were gonna be his safety the safety net for those probes to run away from the vultures but now so much damage has occurred like he's lost so many probes i, I gotta he's gotta have killed like 15 20 probes this game it's kind of wild yeah and for someone like barracks he doesn't usually you know secure that kind of um yield from his vulture rates he's not like known for his vulture control so it is a little bit unforgivable for mighty to give up that much of economy um so easily here to barracks and you, i like how barracks is being active out on the map right now trying to lay down mines behind the army of mighty like you want to be active in the mid game with your vultures and just keep mining up the map when if you get a tiny window to do so absolutely just want to uh, give yourself opportunities uh, to get free wins those mines are a hundred percent free of course they're very necessary for the push out later uh, but as long as you're out here harassing and throwing down mines everywhere you have opportunities to deal damage uh, that really it's it's on the protoss player to 
clear those out effectively. Like right here, he's taking a little bit of damage. Every every single little bit helps before this big fight comes in. Two Arbiters heading around the bottom side. It looks like he's going for some sort of recall, but uh, is that actually what he's doing right now? Is he is he going to come forward and just throw down some stasis? stasis play. Yeah, I think it might just be straight up stasis play. It makes sense as well, given the game state. Um, he does have almost perfect energy for two stasis as well. That one's got a little bit more, so I guess we could... He could even see like a recall of zealots. He could do a zealot bomb of recall into the bottom line of tanks would be really fancy, but I don't think we will see it. I think just a couple of stasis instead. There's one stasis on the southern row of tanks. There's a big, deep tank line, though, at the bottom. Would have been really interesting to see a zealot recon to that just another state is going to be coming out instead though and that barracks soaked up so much phase disruption shots from those dragoons that barracks is actually trading reasonably well this should be just like pro the protoss player folding over the terran but actually because that barracks eating up so many shots um like barracks actually not traded too badly here yeah barracks done a great job of targeting the dragoons as well not allowing those tanks to just fire on the uh, zealots there that were on top of the tanks now he's gonna clear this and he holds the third that is not what i was expecting should I, I, I thought he was gonna get completely wiped out here yeah, I, I thought that as well. Like, honestly, that uh, unironically, that barracks just floating there, I think, saved him. Like, without that barracks floating there, I think he's a dead man, that's for sure. His namesake coming in handy in this <laughs> last yeah. fight. Barracks. Utilizing the barracks in the front, just flying that out. Sucking up an insane amount of shot that thing tanked so much damage that it's managed to save him in this game. And barracks has that third base fully up, and now we can go into this stage of the game. What I was talking about earlier, where you've got the full ring of turrets and tons of defenses all around your main. Can Mighty get in there and do a, a recall, or is that even the right choice? Yeah, I'm not too sure at the moment. I think a recall actually risks losing the game because he hasn't got a yeah. big standing army anymore. You know what I mean? Like, he hasn't got a huge supply to work with. If he, if he goes for that kind of play right now, it's actually kind of risky. He, if he does go for a recall, he'll want to max out a little bit more first. But that also gives more breathing room to barracks to kind of grow a little bit more, stabilize, maybe start to push out to take a fourth. But I don't know where he's going to take a fourth. I think he may even be forced to take the center as his fourth. But against Arbiter, that kind of does favor Mighty a little bit let's see where barracks pushes because he's not ready just yet he's trying to slow down the ever expanding protoss player by sniping these probes over and over again and he's gonna get this probe he does get that I was really close it could have been a miss there on high ground but it manages to connect he's slowing down these bases uh it's for mighty deal. yeah it's huge deal right now this is really what he needs to do to keep himself alive in this game catching these probes again a fantastic play from barracks man this is really yeah. really good i mean he's essentially slowing down this base by like at least a minute and a half maybe more and that, like in a game like starcraft that's a huge order of magnitude going in your favor and he's even going to like tuck these vultures all the way into the top right after laying mines to draw out mighty's army and have to force it to chase this down so he's having to invest resources time and attention just to like deal with these vultures just chilling out on the map right now so getting a lot of value out of these mineral only units the mines over on the left-hand side are spotting. Oh, he's going to come into this? Oh, we're kidding. There, there's a huge uh, supply depot wall. Yeah, I don't want to go in there. Yeah. He has mines on the left-hand side uh, of the screenshot there uh, that actually spotted the probe coming in as well. So he wants to come down and try to kill that probe, but the Nexus gets started. Oh, EMP! Ooh, that was huge. 200 energy on that Arbiter. It's just gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. I mean, that's a recall down the drain. Two stasis down the drain is a big deal. A lot of utility just getting dried up for Mighty. And he's having to, like, take this low ground base instead of the, t the high ground top right. So he's not going to be able to, like, set up the gateway rally and get everything set up quite as cost efficiently and uh, in a timely manner as he would like to. It's now almost 19 minutes, and he's only just now starting to split the map horizontally. So Barracks has done a great job of slowing him down, but he hasn't grown a lot. We need to see Barracks take a fourth base right now while pushing. He's actually going to push towards the top right. I mean, this is this is the power of this map. Um, the ability to siege up on these high grounds along the rim of this kind of crater in the center of the map. Uh, it's so hard to attack into a position like that. Arbiter coming from behind here. We've got one Arbiter at the front as well. Should have some energy for at least one spell. 
This army is looking insanely good, though, for Barracks. He's done just enough to hold this off. Oh, probe transfer coming through. I think that Barracks is definitely going to key onto that, start to pick off those probes. No, he's more focused on this army. EMP in the middle of that Protoss army. The tanks are so stacked up. What is going on yeah. in this middle? The minerals are really stop or preventing... Oh my gosh, what is this? Big recall. Oh, stasis on the right-hand side. How many tanks in that stasis? So many. Too many to count. Yeah, six tanks today. That's it. That's crazy. And he did a massive zealot recall as well. There's not a lot of tanks left to even try and defend this. He's trying to desperately get some rallied units up here. If he can maybe reinforce these stasis tanks to avoid them from dying, this won't be too big of a deal. And he can actually launch a counter attack. There's not a lot of Protoss infantry remaining on the ground currently. Supplies actually kind of strangely even. Oh. Does get a nice mind drag on those two tanks on the left though. But it looks like Barracks is going to quickly try and push up here on the right hand side while waiting for that stasis to, to kind of out there and there's not a lot of units from my team maybe just barely enough to try and fend this off a barracks could get a little bit of damage done here that was wild i don't know if that was intentional or was uh, mighty just reacting to the situation um all of those tanks got clumped up as they were trying to move through the middle and he pounced upon it uh, brilliantly clearing out a lot of these tanks and slowing down this army quite a bit but now Barracks being up here in the top right hand corner, there's not a big enough army for Mighty to fight. His Arbiter's been EMP'd. He's got two more Arbiters over here on the side. Barracks taking another base down to the six o'clock. He realizes that attention is a precious resource and Mighty just doesn't have enough to pay attention to the top right hand corner and the bottom center at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Mighty did a wise uh, stasis on two tanks that were laying siege that Nexus, but with upgrades, 3-2 on these Terran mech units, Vultures can make short work of the Nexus now as well, and they are going to do just that and make sure he slows down Mighty in his expansion. Barracks, meanwhile, taking this pocket base off to the left of the 6 o'clock position to get his fourth base up and operational soon, because he is starting to become mined out. You do need two bases of economy to kind of feel like you can still pump as Terran. You barely will have managed to sustain that but he is losing every single tank up in this top right and mighty has got a lot of arbiters still alive that are going to start banking up energy luckily not enough energy right now to make any plays so barracks might be able to stabilize and get this fourth base operational but very soon i imagine we're going to see a lot of recalls or stasis coming out of mighty and trying to leverage his uh, infantry advantage right now because i don't think barracks is pumping on all cylinders until he gets his fourth base mining well, Mighty is mining on one base right now. Just want to mention that. He's gotten only center left, his third base mining. Both the main and natural have been mined out, and top center just went down. So, I, Barracks is in an almost unlosable position at this point uh, after like killing it. that off. And, you know, he's still got the, a little bit going in the natural. He's still got his third, and his fourth has just come up. If we don't see a recall at 6 o'clock within the next, like, 30 seconds, I think that Barracks is going to take this. Yeah, well, there's no energy left to even do the recall. He's going to have to wait at least a minute or so to even have the energy to, to do that. So mm. I think Barracks has got this. Like, unless he makes any, like, significant blunders here with his army positioning or what have you. I think you're right. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be enough economy left in that tank from Mighty to catch back up again. And Barracks is already starting to shoot ahead in supply. Now that 6 o'clock is uh, operational as well. So he's looking very healthy. As long as he just, like, trades well and, you know, maneuvers his army cautiously, doesn't get all of his tank stasis for free. And if he keeps getting EMPs as well, like, he should be able to, like, completely trade Mighty out of the game. That Mighty has been flying in with his Arbiters a little bit too... getting a little bit too friendly with the Terran army. Uh, and there's just been constant EMPs with the uh, science vessels knocking out that energy and really removing the utility of that unit. Now he's pushing into uh, this little corner. Of course, Mighty is ready with a pretty sizable army, but I just, I don't know if he's got the spells to make it happen. And uh, the group of army that Barracks has been able to put together at 190 supplies, pretty yeah. overwhelming. Um, still no recall down to the bottom center, despite there being like six Arbiters out on the field. He hasn't been able to send one down like that. He's going to come up here, maybe throw down a stasis on something. No, he's just going to lose it for free. Mighty falling apart right now, and he spots the space at the t six, but it's too late. It's too late. Yeah, he... 
It looks like he's going to get the kill on this base of the six, but yeah, like you say, he's already been shut out of his own economy too much now that it doesn't really matter, and there's enough left in the tank for Barracks to just steamroll him. It looks like Mighty has got the agenda of trying to expand this bottom left quadrant, but it's too little too late. He has some utility left on the board. Like, he has a potential to win this game if, like, Barracks went AFK for a minute or something, maybe, but... Yeah, as long as he, like, A moves correctly, keeps his army together, you know, doesn't just, like, run his units into mines and get, like, his entire army suicided for some reason, this should be a Barracks victory. Already sieged up before we see the engagement happen. The Zealot's not even in position to oh. get on top of this. And EMP. This, oh, this, the EMP is huge. The Matrix on the frontline tank as well. Like, everything is just looking absolutely crazy good for Barracks. Si There's 60 ahead in supply, only two one upgrades for these Protoss infantry units as well. So, kind of every metric leaning towards it's barracks right now on the power scale well barracks i mean it's from this current state of the game you would think that he's been ahead the the whole time but he came from a pretty massive deficit uh, found himself in this position uh through nothing but his own skill really impressive stuff for barracks in this game uh, playing a great uh, game from behind now gonna come forward here do we have stasis for this massive oh the emp oh the emp on all the templar Dude, if he had a few storms on that huge group of tanks just at the bottom of the screen here, he probably could have cleared this army, but with all that EMP and all the energy on the Templar going away, I mean, there's just no hope. He has to top out. GG, first GG. Protoss player goes out. Wow, that was a, a fun roller coaster of a first game, man. I was, uh, I was enjoying that one. Yeah, me too. I mean, happy to see Barracks perform well on the matchup he's, he's not usually that well versed in. And, you know, it's nice to see him have a little bit of room to shine when he's not getting absolutely, like, obliterated by Snow's Reaver control and has a tiny bit of breathing room to show his caliber in that matchup still. Mighty and Barracks keeping us on the edge of our seats in game number one. Now we've got Soul Key hitting the field here. Gonna take on Barracks. This classic map, Monty Hall, will be the arena for these two players to duke it out this should be a fun match dude i really don't know how this one's gonna go after last week week seven yeah i mean that crazy match that we saw i, I don't remember who who was it Shin, you got a better member than I do. <laughs> I'm terrible with names, though. I'm actually sure who that was. Uh, that was, was it Action Top Left, you mean, on this map? Yes. I believe it was Action Top Left, and I don't remember and who the Terran player right? was. Sharp, maybe. Um, crazy, crazy match that we saw. Uh, with tons of, like, weird stuff going on. That's that's what this map is made for. That's why it's in the pool. We get some really weird builds out of these players. And Barrack's going to open with a gas build. Interesting. I think... Yeah, this this is looking like uh, maybe a... I don't know if he's going to make this factory proxy and then float it. Or what's he, or if he's just going to do like some weird starport rush. It's kind of interesting because this is kind of like a 10-10-10, a but not. He made like a, he made this gas at 9, for example. This is a seriously fast gas tech build from Barracks. I'm not sure what he wants to do with where he wants to build the factory or what have you. Or if he wants to just go really fast starport rush here. I'm not entirely sure. So... You gotta be a kind of a, a pro just to get your drone to the natural on this map. Um, there's three yeah. different naturals available as well. You can go middle route, top route, or bottom route. And just happens that Barracks has chosen to proxy his factory on the top route. And that Solki has decided to take his natural uh, on that route as well. So that is just... To completely by luck neither player knows which direction they're expanding or you know proxying in so uh right. sulky's gonna have to hold this and barracks may end up getting some good damage just because he randomly chose the right well, path i think he's gonna vulture drop no matter what i think mm. he's gonna build a star pot the second this factory finishes no matter what so even if this was the wrong lane he'd yeah. be able to pick up the vultures and dump them into the main base absolutely momentarily afterwards yeah yeah it just it gives you more uh, th there's more of an advantage here with that, with the with the vulture being there. There's right. there's more opportunity, right? Like you send the vulture in. Sure. There's an opportunity to get some damage right away if there's not a sunken ready, and then you can pressure, 
and then the the drop comes through right after if this was the wrong lane then you know you'd just be sitting here waiting on the other side of the minerals with nothing to do um soul key he's gonna have a hard time here what's his follow-up i imagine it's gonna be uh going straight into oh my gosh he doesn't build a sunken colony either he might just be dead dude he might be dead there's only four lings no sunken colony and he opened up the entrance to his main um, right yeah if he doesn't have link speed on the way or whatever as well this is going to be really rough yeah eventually with good micro barracks can like you know kill infinite amount of links infinite amount of drones and yeah just make a panic sunken right now because he knows a lot of units can go down ah, yeah i think this is just going to be a really awkward situation he can maybe catch this vulture though <gasps> he almost gets the perfect surround on that vulture takes it down to just 20 hp he's even going to cancel the sunken because speed just finished up so sulky actually has some counterplay against this takes the vulture down to 10 hp now only one ling left out on the map he's going to keep that alive for scouting purposes maybe to run by but now the vulture's coming back in this vulture of 10 hp is still doing maximum damage regardless of if it's on one hp or 80 it doesn't matter so now he can come in and do a lot of damage even SED repair coming out to make sure there's as much meat on this attack as possible it seemed like barracks made a mistake when he was next to the hatchery there and uh, sulky almost got the kill he got a little bit overconfident and the vulture control after the fact was insanely good right as the ling speed finishes up is the time where you can usually get some extra damage onto a vulture nice surround there on the vulture coming through but this is still a very rough position this sunken is going to take a lot of damage before it finishes up if it takes too much damage it'll start with one hp when it uh, spawns so he needs to let it finish there we go it does finish up but this doesn't really defend the mineral line too well. Like what I was going to say is that barracks control after the link speed finished. It was amazing. Don't you agree, Shun? That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I think so. Like, and, and Sulky got like really cocky there, even like canceling his creep currently and trying to like be as min maxi as possible. And he might actually bite, be biting a lot of uh, bullets for that because now the Wraith comes in from the 1 1 1 transition before the Spire's even finished. He's going to be super annoying with this, even going to start pew pewing away at those drones with the burst lasers. We will we'll get at least one drone kill for his efforts, maybe even two before the Scourge can get out there to defend it. Oh, the surround here, <laughs> stopping the vultures from running home. He's gonna get nearly all of them banking on the fact that barracks was paying attention to the wraith or back at home he just j dives forward gets the surround kills almost all of these vultures he can't really mind though from the natural still uh there's right. still yeah i mean we could still keep incrementing vultures across the map no problem um and we can't just make these lings forever we have to switch into mutilis production and we're still sitting on one base with nothing mining at the natural and it's going to be a full commitment into two port wraith with cloak as well and yeah with, with only one gas one base worth of minerals coming in for sulky it's going to be a little bit rough for him usually you've got a little bit of extra juice to work with when you're going up against this you've got a few drones mining in the natural expansion but in this case not and also a lot more commitment into the zerglings early on so sulky might have his work cut out for him he has got some gas banked so he can make a few pairs of scourge here and there and slowly add on to these mirrors as he squeezes out um, more drones and stabilizes his mineral production a little bit, but I'm a little bit worried for Sulky. As long as Barracks has got good, good wraith control here with the the cloak, I actually think like Barracks is favored to win. Oh, for sure. If Sulky comes in right now, uh, right as the cloak is finishing up, those wraiths are gonna go in viz and just kill every single mutalisk that Sulky's managed to squeeze out with his tiny, tiny economy. You can see he's hardly even able to mine off of uh, both of his gases right now. He's just going to add on the second extractor. He's not dead in this game, but the hopes of coming back from a position like this for any Zerg yeah. player, it, it's it's tough. It's it's a weak chance right now. There's more wraiths than there are muters, for example. Cloak's just about to be finished, and yeah, with good with good control, it's very difficult for the muters to come out on top. But because he's been so stretched on his economy, I actually doubt that he's been able to afford overlord speed. So there's also the win condition of just picking off overlords and outmaneuvering the muters as well, on top of everything else. Uh, another drone going down. Just another drop in the bucket here for Soul Key, over and over again. He's been taking these little bits of damage and. It's all accumulated to this point. Overlord's starting to go down around the map. He won't be able to produce anything. He doesn't have Overlord's speed, so it's very hard to get on top of these wraiths. 
if Overlord Speed suddenly finishes, uh, he could try to dive on top of the Wraiths and take a big fight. I don't see Barracks building a lot of defenses back at home. So he might be getting, you know, overconfident. Maybe he's, uh, you know, too comfortable in his position. And in that case, the Overlord Speed finishes and the rates or the, the Mutas just come straight across the map. Maybe you can break here with no turrets and just Wraiths. Maybe if he rallies everything, all of his Overlords, all of his Scourge and Mutas across the map, maybe he can win this game. Solki going to bank it all on this one attack. Yeah, he didn't seem super confident with his Wraith control just then, and a lot of the Wraiths are a little bit bruised up, so with some good uh, Glaive connections with those Mewers, we'll soften up that stack of Wraiths as well. At least for the time being, Barracks is going to force to be run back to his base with a tail tucked between his legs, repair those Wraiths back up to full, and give Sulky a few precious seconds of just squeezing out more and more Mutas. Now that he's got this second gas online, he can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the production of the Terran player, and if Barracks can never expand, then eventually Sulky may be able to run away with the game, but it's going to take him a little bit of time to get into that game state. He's seen a bunch of Marines being produced. He knows that there are... Uh, there, there's going to be a Marine Medic follow-up with the Wraiths uh, in tow to try and help that out. He's going to build a couple of sunken colonies here at the front to hold this Marine attack. He may need to throw down a Spore as well because the Wraiths can become a real problem. That's so many Wraiths now. Um, and Barracks is about to pull the trigger on this attack. He's just coming for the natural. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's just waiting for like things like Stim and what have you to finish up um, upgrading because of how late that academy was. And now he's going to finally start to move out down this northern lane. Just as Sulky's starting to poke out and prod a little bit. Uh, I don't think he'll want to stray too far from his base now that he's identified this bio ball. He, he can't even really engage this Bioball out on the map. He has to kind of just sit back with his Mewers and wait for them to come to him. He could maybe try an ambush on the Wraiths if Barracks isn't paying attention, but it'd be super risky right now if the Wraiths are in support with the Bioball. It looks like he's actually splitting off the Wraiths to go hunt down two links, and this might give a little bit of a window for Sulky to come in here now that he knows where the Wraiths are to maybe try and get a few kills for free on either of the packs. He's going to try and catch one of these two packs. He sees the Wraiths. Immediate cloak there. A little bit annoying for Sulky. He can't take this engagement right now. Does get a good shot off there, though. No. Tough to get shots on these wraiths when they're being microed uh, efficiently, but uh, Barracks kind of slipping a little bit. Now coming down towards the sunken line. Sulky going to get set up here with three sunkens and a ton of mutas. He's got more than 12 mutas. He's got two groups right now. Can he save this? He's got to protect these sunken colonies. He cannot allow the wraiths to start bashing away at these sunkens and dealing free damage that's why i was talking about the spore a little bit earlier can really yeah. help out in these situations yeah it looks like he's going to be using the marines as like a point defense for the raves to come in here and be super annoying it just snipes the gas actually he's not even wanting to necessarily break the zerg just deny the gas being mined he's gonna to have to eventually make a spore there to try and deny this but it's gonna be really frustrating because he could actually potentially lose this gas uh, and if he if he goes if he loses out on that 300 gas a minute at this stage of the game it could be pretty crippling for Solki. Ooh, plus one armor finished for Solki, and his mutilus stack is pretty large right now i doubt we have plus one attack for these marines and you know they're going to be doing very little damage against these like mutas are surprisingly beefy uh especially with that plus one armor let's see if he can break this he didn't build a spore here at the top it's actually another sunken so he's got four sunkens down this army stack of barracks is getting larger but so is the muta stack the muta stack is growing and the wraiths are starting to go away a lot of them are dying right now yeah, there's only six race remaining on many of them on very low HP as well. He's kind of like forgotten about the gas for the time being. He doesn't have to worry about microing the, the race back and forth anymore. It looks like he's just trying to build up for a big sunken bust here and hoping he's got enough after like trading that one sunken off and softening up those viewers. He's going to try and come in here and bite a little bit more HP off of those sunken colonies. If he can get the colonies down to just two sunkens, he's probably going to feel like he's got way more than enough to come in here and bust Sulky. But Sulky's going across the map with one of his muter stacks right now. This could be the win window that barracks needs to get a lot of damage done into his natural expansion this is a big gamble for soul key he's been hanging on and keeping his opponent on one base for so long but his mutas are not in position to help this out scourge are coming forward but they're not being sent to fight the raids coming in from behind that mutalist stack finally making it back from the front line it's gonna dive on top of these marines there's only 
two sunken colonies left. That one sunken colony showing up at the very end of this fight. Maybe the, uh, the thing that saves the day. Another Wraith shows up, but the majority of those are gone. And just a few Marines left. I think that Soul Key has managed to hold. Dude, Soul Key is wow. so good. I can't believe yeah. he's brought himself back from the brink here. Honestly, it's kind of crazy, yeah, like with pure Muta Micro as well, like he overmade Muta's and just did nothing but non-stop Muta Micro to try and edge out the game. It looks like he's just barely done it, like Barracks is now trying to take an expansion, but he knows that he's kind of lost out on his window to punish Sulk. He's really hoping on busting the Sunkens there and not have to play a straight up game after this because the transitions aren't too clean for Barracks going forward from here. And he's going to get mined out in his main way before his natural as well. It's going to be a very awkward game for Barracks and he's going to get some of these Marines picks up on the exit as well. A nice catch here from Sulky while the medics are out of position. Does try and get the race in to kind of save the medics and anything else from going down. Only five Muirs here for the time being, but still enough to be a nuisance and come up here and try and bully Barracks now that the Wraith is in a low enough, more manageable count. Just wild. Sulky so impressed once again. This guy being sent out first. I thought he was actually going to go down to the... Uh, first vultures that were coming in and it felt so close to just a straight up victory for barracks and somehow this man has managed to pull things back into a reasonable position the balancing of the economy the micro of the mutilus everything has been almost perfect here from soul key sit uh, from the beginning of the game since that uh, initial vulture got in and dealt so much damage now Solki is putting pressure on a barracks. He's forcing him back. But if barracks gets this base up, you know, you have to get a third here as Zerg. And Solki hasn't managed to invest in that yet. He's barely got enough money to keep producing Mutas right now. And he looks like he's just trying to win. Yeah, it looks like he's squeezed out some Lings to do a little bit of a Muta Ling step once he's whittled down this force a little bit or dragged it out of position. He's got the Lings just waiting in the wings with uh, Link Speed already upgraded from earlier, ready to come in here and pounce onto this small bio force of Barracks. But yeah, so far the force is large enough that he's a little bit hesitant to come in here and he's, he's right to be a bit hesitant. He wants to try and see if he can get as many trades as possible before pulling the trigger on that. There is a very tiny little choke for him to like get his units back and forth. So if he could kind of like utilize the fact that it's hard for Barracks to maneuver his army back and forth through that choke point to keep abusing with his Muirs would be pretty good in this stage. But the, the, the point defense of the Wraiths is making it very challenging for Sulky to come in here and get this damage done. He is still finding these small pockets of opportunity to abuse Barracks, but he's, he's having to wait a long time before getting the trade that he wants to get. Sulky's going to go for the kill here in just a few more moments, but Irradiate is on the way. He's got to pull the trigger before that spell is available. Otherwise, his his Mutalisk stack is going to get uh, just completely slammed by that splash damage. There it is. The Irradiate is done. There's 70 energy on this vessel. Barracks just needs to get the Irradiate on the proper unit. Solki is a little bit late in pulling the trigger on this. He's ready to go now. He's going to come in. Where's the Irradiate going to be spent? Irradiate there on the bottom left-hand corner. That was not the correct Irradiate. Oh my wow. god. Solki wipes this out completely. The Irradiate was so ineffective that Barracks may just lose this game. Yeah, this is just complete straight up air superiority now for Sulky. Going to get right on top of that Terran production line. There's no hope for Barracks now. GG finally being called. I really want to see Zerg win this season and Terran come second so we can see what kind of crazy tiebreaker they're going to come up with. That might be the case. God damn, dude. Sulky's so good. Yeah. I really, wow. uh, there's so many moments in that game. I thought that he was going to get kicked out. I thought that he was probably going to end up losing, but he manages to swing that win on such a crazy map after getting so unlucky right off the bat, right? The right. natural facing the direction where the fa factory was being proxied. It's just so tough, but... That's the sign of a true champion, man. Even in a tough situation, he keeps his head together. Keeps his head on his shoulders and plays out a fantastic game. We're going to jump into game number three now. Okay, we're going to switch over to a more regular map now. Radeon here with Solki versus Miss. Solki in the bottom left, Miss in the top left. Vertical spawns here for this ZVP. And I'm really happily... happily um 
really happily, really happy that we've got maps like Radeon in the map pool. Like, if we're going to have a standard map, I want Radeon. I don't want Polypoid or something like that. I want a map like this. This is, like, newer, fresher. We haven't played it a thousand times, and it's still super standard. has really long rush distances and kind of does force a more macro-centric way of playing. Could be seeing a gateway first out of miss here. I have absolutely zero clue on how this player likes to play. But, yeah, gateway first kind of makes me feel like maybe he's quite confident in this matchup. I'm curious to see what he can bring to the table against the likes of Sulky. I don't just want to see Sulky absolutely dominate here. I want to see Miss have a good performance. For sure. We've never casted Miss before, I don't think, right, Shun? This is the first. Right, right. Um, coming out with the gateway against a player of the caliber of Sulky, that's definitely showing some confidence. And he could get punished for it, right? This is a, an overpool yep. from Sulky. He's going to have some lings out. And he might just challenge you, you know? He might save Larva and pop out a ton of lings. Four lings, I think, are going to start here. He might go six and come across this map, start to put the pressure on. If he slips two lings into Miss's base, what's the chances that Miss can actually win? <sighs> <laughs> if someone like Sulky controlling the lings while he's macroing back at home, I don't want to be. I don't want to be missing that situation. Like no. so many probes are gonna either die or be forced to stop mining, and he's gonna be macroing on point back at home. It's not gonna be a happy day. You do want to make at least four lings when you don't drone scout. So he's made like yeah a safety of four. So that'll be enough to bully back this initial zealot. Hopefully, uh, might try and get the snipe on that um, probe. But it actually, needs need, nearly lost that ling. Does throw down the the third base natural on location. And now it looks like Miss is kind of hooing and hawing where he wants to send the zealot. He's just like he's just gonna rotate it back around, going back home. It looks like. It's the right choice because Solki sent his links across the map. You know that he's bu building more links. He's not just going to yeah. not make links uh, when you've got the zealot right in front of his natural. So more links are coming. These links are going to start to harass this pylon. We need to get uh, our other zealot back to the natural as soon as possible. This one zealot could get overwhelmed by just four wow. links. And there it is into the main base. I love the skill checks from Sulky here. Like, he's really, he understands all the things that Miss might not know how to deal with it. So he's like, like, throwing lots of questions. And if he hasn't got an answer, he just slips the links in. And like, that was, like, this is how you abuse, like, weaker players, is you just try and force as many interactions as possible. And there's a lot of behavior trees that Miss, Miss can choose to do. And a lot of them are wrong choices. So eventually, he, uh, Sulky just forces a wrong choice out of Miss and eventually finds a way to slip in some links and some annoyance. And now that there's a wrench in the works of Miss, it's going to be very difficult for him to navigate this game going forward against someone of Sulky's caliber. Absolutely. His win percent chance, I'd say, just dropped dramatically in this game the moment yeah. that those four lings got in uh, it's a tough ramp to deal with the reverse ramp uh, space tile set is huge there's a lot of space on that ramp to try and hold with just a zealot and a probe and he didn't did not do that perfectly he's got three look look at how many zealots he's managing to keep home right now there's five zealots that miss uh, has purchased and he's not able to do anything with them and only four links are controlling all of them they're keeping them back at home and yeah, I mean, Miss has no information on the map, and he's not able to glean any. He's not able to put on any pressure at all. All that Sulky needs to do is just keep moving these links. Yeah, yeah. And he's also seeing, like, some of the timings of um, Miss here, and back at home, just going to be droning up, getting his, you know, three base spire. Like, he would usually, like, nothing really crazy. He makes additional links just to make sure he doesn't die to the front. He's keeping a, a check on that as well. And yeah, being able to keep the Zealots pinned back here just kind of gives him so much breathing room in this matchup. And he might even be able to get like a probe kill up here or even deny mining just for a second. Like, it's just annoying. Like, even just like losing out on a, a bit of gas here is going to be frustrating for Miss. Something that he wouldn't usually be having to deal with now that is becoming an issue against someone that's already better than you. It's just going to like tip the scales against you all the more and make that mountain just even slightly more insurmountable to climb later. Absolutely. There goes a probe in the main base. Picks one of those off. Plus one. Going up here for Miss in the main. So he won't lose that if there was some sort of Hydralis, fake Hydralis bust. Quite a few units out on the map right now. I think he just made a bunch of lings because he saw those three zealots moving out. So that's actually going in Miss' favor, right? Like he forced out all these lings and he went back home with his zealots. So, uh, I mean, 
at least one good move here. He is going to get that Corsair out in a moment, get across the map and scout out that Soul Key is playing just a pretty standard game, figure out that there's a Spire on the way and stuff. But, uh, dude, another probe goes down. Another one going to fall as well. Another one. No, not quite. Just about getting a third in just that one attack. He sends in the Lings. He doesn't want to micro that anymore. Now it's time for Mutas. Yeah, yeah, we got four hatcheries on the way. We, we can start making a lot of meters. We've been mining t off of two gases for a while now, so Sulky can go Ogrezerg from this. If he, if he snipes like the first Corsair and then just starts dominating him with a bit frustrating for Miss. He is throwing down a safety cannon in the main base, at least. I imagine the natural as well. Uh, but still, like this could go very wrong very quick for Miss if he loses just one of these Corsairs unnecessarily. Absolutely, and just the threat of going Ogre Zerg could be enough yeah. to, you know, put Miss in a really bad position. Even if he's just, you know, coming across, he's got a few Scourge, a few Mutas here and there. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to go fully all in. Now, Ling's running into the main. He's going to target the cannon in this uh, mineral line. And, I mean, probes are going to be pulled. That's a pretty good block for Miss. Uh, yeah, dealing with that, but the Scourge are going to come in. The Mutas are going to go on top. What happened to the Scourge? Wait, one Scourge connected? What? Where, where are all the Scourge here? I thought he was going to pick off and, and just go into the main, c completely control this man, but not enough Scourge to take out all these Corsairs, and Miss will stabilize. Well, I mean, he's still got one of the cannons left alive to kind of give a bit more point defense to those Corsairs as well. So there's no real window for Sulky to exploit. He's got just a couple of pairs of Scourge to come and join these Mewers now. But I think his window to punish uh, Miss has kind of dwindled a little bit. He's going to, like, you know, glitch a... I'm um, sorry, a block a probe behind his own minerals here so he can stack his um, Corsairs up later to make sure he's able to micro those to maximum efficiency. He's going to need to against Sulky. He will try to abuse his Muters in this matchup one way or another, wherever that's going for straight up Ogre Zerg, or just sniping off your high Templars later on in the game. Um, is going to be wisely transitioning um, probably into some Dragoon soon. I imagine he will not want to stay pure Zealots here against Solki. Oh, for sure. He's going to be getting into his 8 gateway production as soon as possible here on 2 base. He hasn't lost any probes at all, uh, aside from the ones that were killed by the Lings, and Sulky is setting up a lot of sunkins. He really doesn't want to die to a zealot timing, but yeah. I, I don't think that he can even move out with a zealot timing with this few Corsairs. He needs a lot more before he can fight against this number of mutas. I'd like to see uh, Miss just sit back a bit more comfortably and wait for the full production to come out, but it seems like he actually does want to come out and attack. And I think this is exactly what Soul Key wants. You're not getting so. through those all those sunkins, and the, the Mutas and Scourge are gonna dominate in the air. Yeah, this yeah. is this is gonna be rough, I think, for for Miss. It's coming in now. Yeah, not only that, the sunkins also enable the Mutas to go on the counter offensive and not worry about clearing, being you know clean up on our five back at home. Does try and get on top of these Mutas with the neutral base. Look at the ocean of Scourge coming to zone out these um, Corsairs right now. They are trying to do a little uh, fancy micro there, but he's not quite of the, the caliber of player to pull off those kind of moving backwards shots. It's very difficult to do without frame perfect inputs. Does lose a lot of those Corsairs. Just a small handful remaining, like four or four, five, maybe not even five actually. Actually, I think only four Corsairs remaining. Trying to kill, yeah, just four Corsairs remaining. And Sulky wisely going to, like, you know, just chill for now. But at any moment, Miss could, like, just throw this game. And I'm a little bit concerned for him. We do have plus one Carapace on this air as well, giving a bit more air superiority so he can start to dominate in the air. He's got so many Scourge remaining as well. He's going to want to try and get on top of this Corsair fleet again and again and eventually get that air advantage and then just abuse Miss. Now... Couldn't we just go for an Archon Zealot timing? It seems like he wants to wait for Storm, but Archon but then, Zealot... But then, there's not enough, but then there's not enough Storm remaining to deal with the Six Hatch Hydra follow-up. Like, it kind of is geared up to being a Soul Key Edge game either way, I feel. Right. Right. We don't have Hydras out just yet. We probably don't have the Hydra upgrades just yet either. They're probably on the way now, but... Diving into the main base... Oh, I bet he wishes he has an, had an Archon right now. <laughs> Uh, Archon yeah, he... does kind of clear a lot of this stuff. Storms get thrown down, but they don't deal with all the Scourge. Scourge here, trying to catch up to these Corsairs, but the micro, pretty good. Losing control of this main base now. Miss is struggling 
why not make an Archon? What are we doing? We're heading yeah. out with the Templar that don't have any energy, that have already used their storms. Miss kind of panicking. He's just going to go for a counterattack, and that's exactly what Soul Key wants him to do. With all the yeah. sunken colonies back at home, he can deal with this attack no problem. Well, Miss is just kind of like gambling. He's just like hoping that he doesn't die to this because he needs the storms for later to have any chance at winning later on. But that means it's easier for Sulky to win now. So he's going to like bite the, bite the bullet either way, unfortunately. He does get on top of these Hydras at the rally point, but the three Sunkens deep able to be drilled upon with these drones. But the storm on top of those Sunkens, beautifully done, will take out a lot of that uh, drone drill potential. Maybe he can get some damage on here. But here come the Scourge to finish up all of those remaining Corsairs. There's now no anti-air besides the the High Templars and the cannons back at base. GG just going to be called straight up there from Miss, and looks like Zerg in full on domination mode tonight. All right, Miss giving us a nice little showcase there. His first time in the KCM, as far as we know, uh, putting up a pretty good fight against the two-time ASL champion. Yeah. Um, respectable, very respectable. I would say so. I mean, yeah, like going a little bit toe to toe with the ASL champ on your debut game. It's not not the worst thing to write home about. So yeah, all things considered, like, I, I would say he can be a little bit happy about that performance. Going to be going straight in for a wall here from light in the natural expansion, trying to get a, advantage of that. And it looks like yeah, nothing crazy from uh, Soki here. He's actually checking down here for um, an eight rex or something. And doesn't see anything like that. Instead, just going to be going straight for a normal 12 hatch and probably going to see one of the most normal games of the evening. Good respect here from Sulky to send out this early drone. Just wants to make sure that he doesn't get cheesed and knows that Light is capable of, of doing that, especially on a wacky map like this. Um, yeah. Is this called Minstrel? I can't remember the name of this map, actually, Shin. Do you remember? I think it's Minstrel. I'm really bad of names, so asking me is not going to help anybody. Minstrel, uh, we might correct that a little bit later, but this is a wacky map with uh, mineral patches that lead you into the middle of the map. So you can you have like these strange bases that face your opponent, and they can you know storm and do all kinds of uh, harassment over the wall, which uh, leads to some interesting situations. There's like pocket bases in the top right and bottom left that will probably be taken here um, but there's no easy base to take as a zerg player so i'm very curious to see how sulky's gonna play this out versus well, light zvt well he's not doing a 2.5 hatchery he took a, a gas very early on so it looks like we're gonna see a much more traditional approach to this matchup on this map in light of maybe how difficult this third base may be to secure he wants to go very heavy into his tech right away Pulling off drones from the line to try and pick off this SCV. He wants to kind of hide the timing of his build. Um, did he go for link speed first? I don't think so, right? That was a 305. How early was his gas? No, he, he, he took, he just mined his gas slower than usual. Like wow. it took him a little bit of time before he sent the three drones to mine. So it looks like a 2.5 hatchery lair timing, but that was only because he mined his gas a little bit slower. So he might be trying to deceive Light into thinking it's a 2.5 hatch when it's not. Hmm. So he's going to go ahead and tech up quickly. Light back at home. Just getting his gas online now. I think I saw an eBay in there. So he's going to go for a plus one build. Does need to keep all of these Marines alive though in the early game. Really important not to lose these. And he doesn't have an SCV on the other side of the map to confirm that there's not more links on the way here. We will get behind this wall now. He's going to play a 2.5 hatch build anyway. I, I think he... I think he made a mistake. I think maybe he was wanting to play 2.5 hatch anyway, and he just took his gas too early. So we just decided not to mine it for a little bit to kind of compensate. I'm, I think that might have been a mistake from him. I'm not sure. Hmm. That's interesting. He, maybe a rare mistake from Sulky. Maybe part of his build. I'm not sure, but he will be going for this 2.5 hatch. Spires on the way. It's looking like an incredibly normal game with the 2.5 hatch going up against the plus one. There's nothing more basic than this. What? A second yeah. eBay. Okay, there's the switch up here for light. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of crazy, right? Is this, if, if this is intentional, I'm kind of blown away. Like, this would absolutely crush a lurker build getting that, that fast plus one armor. 
would be interesting. I'm not sure how it's going to play out here. It's, surely that's got to be a mistake from Light, right? Is, is this actually a build? Double eBay? This well, is crazy. he's going to use it. He's going to use it. Yeah, he's getting the plus one armor. Very weird. Yeah, very weird build. Um, He's going to go into three racks, I guess. I doubt you can afford four racks off of this uh, with both these upgrades, right? I mean, I don't the think eBay's... So, yeah. Okay, four racks. There it is. Okay. <laughs> This My is going to be goodness. all in, This My... is going to be the fastest 1-1 one, one timing push we've ever seen. This is going to be a wild, wild push. Um, Soul Key, he's the guy who's used to being able to control the Terran player out on the map uh, with his Zer Zergling and Mutalist control, right? So maybe we're going to see... Oh, what? An evolution Chamber back at home. He's going to start plus one armor? Are we going to see a, a crazy Zerg build? Out I of mean, him? It, oh, he doesn't see it. Oh, how it's, close it's, is that? It's crazy Zerg timing. Yeah, this 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 the evolution chamber is definitely yeah. crazy Zerg timing. So this is this this game could be so wild saying. But to be fair, like Light's build counters a crazy Zerg setup. Like this is a sunken busting build. Like having like right. a, a, a powerful spike of like one one, like that's the way you want to play against Crazy Zerg. You want to just wait for your upgrades to finish, then just go right before they've got a critical mass of ultras. And if he's got that early of a one one timing, he might just be able to bowl some Solky over, and Solky might not even anticipate it because there's no way he's anticipating a 1-1 one, one push coming this early on, right? I don't know, man, because we're going to have such a late factory here. Uh, it's unlikely that he'll be starting plus two right away, and there won't be a timing for a tank push to break the natural. So yeah. Solky going to get in here, start to pick off some Marines. I'm really curious to see how these two builds will match up once Light hits the field with that 1-1. One, one. It's going to be a very scary timing, but I think if Solky has enough Sunkins back at home, he just barely might be able to hold it. I think Sulky's going to misread the situation and not make enough Sunkens back at home as well. I think he's going to think that he's got he's got enough purely with Mutas alone. Plus one weapons now finished and plus one armor is going to shortly follow behind. I don't know how quick Sulky will notice. He might not actually click on a Marine to check for some time until he, the trades start acting funny and he starts wondering, if my Mutas not shooting or like what's going on here? Like eventually he's going to be wise to it. He does see the scan? He does scan and see there's no Sunkens right now. So he knows there's a timing that maybe he can just completely bowl Sulky over. He's trying to take this base in the bottom left but yeah the, the, the tech is going to be really slow for light here so he has to get something done of this one one i imagine but uh i don't think sulky's gonna be ready for it sulky's making lings right now he's getting ready to kill this early bio ball but with that plus one armor coming online i think the calculation is just going to be slightly off you know sulky is so good at making that perfect ca perfectly calculated middle ling stab to surround and kill the bio army. And I just, I don't think he's gonna be able to quite figure this out. Yeah, I think maybe he sees the uh, extra eBay now. Does he actually see that? I'm not sure. Lings are out in force. There are, there, there's one sunken that's coming up. He's gonna hit this from behind, try to pick off some Marines. Miss, messes it up a little bit there. He should have gotten a couple of Marine kills. Uh, catching up to the bio ball like that, but he doesn't and now it's all stacked up light is ready to come into this natural There's only one sunken and a ton of lings is light gonna be able to break this It's a scary moment here for soul key his overlords are in a position that is a little bit dangerous He's gonna start to lose a bunch of these soul key won't be able to produce anything during this attack Here he comes coming in from both sides soul key gonna get the huge surround here on all of this Great surround with so many links coming in the Marines are fighting way better than they should with that plus one armor Helping out a huge amount, but he does clear it. Wow soul key clears everything uh, I think the only mistake there was light didn't consider making like one fire bat or two just to help soak the lit the potential mutant link from sulky he knows that that sulky's gimmick to clean up with mutiling i would have expected him to make just one or two fire bats but yeah it looks like he just barely he's actually gonna win against the mutas right now so and he hasn't got many um units back at home and he, he had, it's going to be a while before he can actually make El Ultralis can actually wait for them to hatch. So there's still a moment of weakness here for Sulky. Like he, he's got maybe like 10 or so muters out on the field. There, there's still a window for Light to keep rallying units across the map and keep putting on some more pressure here. He is going to be transitioning into his own tech, but there's not a lot of Sunkens and not a lot of units coming out for Sulky right now. I think that Light can still maybe just barely make this work. There's the Ultralis Cavern. I think we've got plus one uh, armor done for these uh, links. Let's see. Plus one is done. He's actually going to okay. get ahead. He's going to get ahead now. This is yeah. the big problem with the build that Light did is 
Uh, because he went double eBay, he got the plus one, plus one early. A third eBay? What are we doing? Oh my, oh my god. Light, he's got to pay attention. He's got to notice that. Like, he, Light is on autopilot right now. He is... He is we, were, we were talking about deja vu earlier. There's definitely glitches in the Matrix saying because that shouldn't happen. That's, that's for damn sure. Oh, there we go. Okay, he does uh, he cancel. cancel it. We have slight return to normalcy there for a second. Shulky still shocking around with these uh, mewers and tar he didn't replace the turrets on this production area so his production line is completely exposed for Sulky to abuse whenever he tries to maneuver out as well so Sulky's going to be able to buy a lot of time by being annoying here and uh, yeah I don't think that Light's going to be in a great position to win this game with how slow the upgrades are he, like, like Light really had to win like right here right now and because he's not able to do so Sulky's going to kind of run away with this game uh, both ahead in the upgrades and going to be sitting pretty on three gases yeah, the upgrade advantage, it, it it sounds funny going double eBay early, that that would give you a later upgrade timing, but because the factory is so late, uh, the plus one plus one comes in in a great time, but the plus two cannot start until the science vessel or the science facility is done. Ling's coming in here, trying to stab from behind. Marines or the Mutalis gonna come in from the other side, stab in, try to pick off a couple of Marines. It doesn't go that well for Sulky. Waiting on another armor upgrade here. Once that plus two armor comes in, it's gonna be ahead of where Light is. Although not by much, plus two attack for Light's probably going to finish up just moments after that. But if he hits a good timing here with an upgrade advantage, how are you going to stop Crazy Zerg when you're already behind in those upgrades? Yeah. I mean, if anyone can do it, is Light. He's the kind of guy to like really skimp on his SCV production and just go all out unit. So we kind of see this here. Like he's adding on barracks. He's not even producing SCVs. He does want to end the game on a very low economy. He has four science vessels, a few control group of bio units. But now we see the Ultra Scout. Kindness upgrade is already done. So a lot of armor on these Ultras. And because of the slow weapons timing on those Gorse Rifles for those Terran Marines, they're not going to trade too effectively. Even getting that plus one finished up on the melee as well just now is so key. So Kai's the blade is going to be two chomping these marines down despite having that plus one armor upgrade so everything kind of looking geared towards a sulky victory here right now but i wouldn't necessarily count light out he is a master at winning with this very low economy style yeah light has put together a really sizable force significant uh, fighting power here for light i haven't seen him throw down even a single uh irradiate just yet on these mutas he's saving it for the okay there we go he does throw one down Good pull. Another great pull here. Soul Key. Having his Mutalist already spread doesn't take very much damage from that. And he just removed a bunch of the energy from these vessels. I was thinking maybe he was going to try and bust Soul Key with like four D Matrix on Marines. <laughs> but right. it looks like that's not, maybe not going to be the case. No, he is, he, he is thinking about adding in a little bit of firebats, though. Nice little snipe from Sulky picking up that one firebat on the eastern flank. If there was a few firebats with this army, it would make the, the Ultra Link just that little bit weaker. But so far, it's just pure Marines and a lot of Ultra just being banked. And Sulky being quite wise with his Ling flanks as well, being annoying as possible, slowing down the advance of Light as much as he can. He knows every second that uh, ticks past, there's a little bit more favor towards Sulky. Like, he, he will win the long game here for sure as long as the game state doesn't get too much upset. And uh, so far, though, it looks like Light is going to be just pushing right down the center of the map. And he might get some of these signs. Let's just pick, though, a few irradiates going off on all these ultralists before the fight can even happen. So that is a pretty big win for Light getting all those irradiates off. There's not a lot of Scourge to kill the remainder. He just kind of ate the Scourge and just went for the deeper ra uh, irradiates. And now he's going to be just stem pushing the Amu Marines right before the second armor plating is finished up on these ultralists. He might just barely have enough critical mass to do this. He needs to target fire down into individual ultras though the rest are softened up from those earlier irradiates but now the radiating double edged sword helping splash damage southern is fire force down beautiful block with those medics on the south though preventing any kind of surface area for soul key it looks like late's done it with his pitiful low economy style just able to somehow outmaneuver soul key in the last few critical moments of the game here sir wow light bust down the front door a bit of a sloppy defense there from soul key he was banking on that final Carapace upgrade finishing that plus two armor finishing um, to, to take that fight, but he waited a little bit too long. Maybe bringing everything together and taking the fight in the middle of the map would have been better, but 
He comes in haphazard with his ultras, not fighting with them all at the same time. Lings were coming in at a kind of a weird timing as well. Their radiates did a huge amount of damage before the fight. Dude, everything kind of went wrong there for Soul Key at the end, but it was a beautiful game to behold. Like so many different weird creative things going on in that game. Really, really awesome to see a match between these two. And finally, Terran getting a victory here over Zerg. It's going to be a fight to the finish. Mini is still left in the protest of wild card there. He might take out a couple of players and stack the stack the deck a little bit. You know, if he picks off a couple of Zergs or something like that, might give Terran a leg up. We're just hoping that Zerg comes in first. Terran comes in second so we can get that even or that uh, tiebreaker match. Can't wait to see it as the poppers go off. Finally, one player has been eliminated from each squad. We're going to jump into our next game, Light versus Mini. It's coming right up. All right, with Soul Key eliminated, we've only got two Pro or two Zerg, two Terran, and one Protoss remaining. Mini is that final Protoss holding the line for Ire here on the Kickback. It's cross map, crazy, crazy map, very familiar or uh, similar to Gladiator. And we've got that uh, big open natural, right? That huge opening to your main base, um, double expansion inside of your main as well. It, it's just a wild map. It's hard to even describe it, really. We've got those right. mineral patches out at the front. We've got neutral sunken colony that doesn't make creep. It, unless you're Zerg, it's just... It's kind of a crazy wild map. We'll, we'll see what happens here in PVT. I don't think we've had a PVT on this map thus far. But things to mention, really important things to mention, is are that uh, there are plenty of high grounds around the map. It's a big ring with a huge open center. And there's so many high ground bases here that... I don't know. I have no idea if carriers are going to be a good thing on this map. But I have a feeling. I have a, a little tingle at the back of my mind that says it's going to be really really strong well there's definitely a lot of dead spaces for carriers to abuse and a few little high perches in the center as well affording some retreat points for those carriers if they are pushing cross map and what have you so yeah i could see that being a thing i could also see arbiters and uh, both storm drops being really highly effective with how tight the these little pocket bases are like there's not really much room to deny the shuttles and arbiters coming in for recalls and just unloading high templars to storm the the line as well so yeah i see a lot of uh frustration being uh, the name of the game for the pro for the protoss in this matchup I, I i could also see this game being like a really long drawn out like and very awkward as well in like how they are navigating their expansion paths because this is not an easy thing for for either side to navigate it's such an open middle of the map there's just this giant open center with a uh, double gas base in the middle and I don't know if we're ever going to see players take that middle, but this setup and this matchup would probably be the one scenario that we might see that happen, right? We've got yeah. cross map, you know, light is going to get up onto three bases really, really quick. And then, you know, when he pushes across, where is he going to take his fourth? Probably in the center. Um, that might happen. Now, we may not even make it there because Mini's doing something a little bit freaky, throwing down a a pylon at the front. Is he going to go for a robo here? Try to do a reaver so. push. And yeah, he does drop the robo. There's one zealot coming up. The probe is being watched here. Light sees the zealot coming in. He's going to have to micro against this. He still doesn't know about that pylon, though. Yeah, he saw the probe coming at the diagonal angle, though. He might be a little bit suspicious on the trajectory that the probe was on. He's going to be wondering, why is there a probe coming at that angle at that time? It doesn't really make sense. So he might be a little bit suspicious about that, but he might be in enough of an autopilot mode where that doesn't even factor into his brain as well. So it could go either way, but I don't know if he's going to have any way of um, figuring that one out. At the moment, he's taking still quite a lot of damage onto these Marines now with the probe micro. Might just barely not getting the kill on that other Marine with the particle beam on that probe but does come in with the dragoon to try and slow down this factory going up already putting down three or so shots onto the scv but with the three marines and the scvs off the line gonna be able to bully this dragoon back and try and get a bunker up at the front here desperately 
Yeah, it needs that bunker so bad. Nice snipe on the one low HP at, uh, Marine there. Getting some extra damage on these SCVs does help. Even gets a kill on one of those as well. Bunker finally finishes, but Mini is going for this one. He is going to try and kill. And I think that Light may have just figured it out. You see he's got the SCV here in the main. He sees no expansions and there's a pylon missing. So where <laughs> where's that extra pylon? Where's the tack? Where's the expansion? A lot of questions in Light's mind right now. I don't know if he's de deduced what's coming here, but he's got to make some moves. He's got to get a tank out. He's actually building an eBay. He's not sure if it's like a DT play somewhere out on the map. He really has no idea, so he's got to prepare for all the options. Yeah, but he, alarm bells are definitely ringing in his head right now. He just doesn't know exactly what it's going to be. He doesn't know if it's DTs or Reavers or if there's even any kind of proxy tech or what have you. So oh, maybe, yeah, he like, saw, maybe he saw that robotic support bay in the main. I'm not sure if he actually got vision on that, but if he did, that's going to help out a lot. Oh, man, this is really dirty. Dropping the Dragoons here on the high ground to try and pick off this turret. He's going to open up this position and... The Reaver's going to be able to get in here and do so much damage. Oh, great surround there, though. SCV's getting on top of... Wait, what? How did that get out of there? Okay. Yeah, he managed Glitched to slide over. over somehow. Yeah, but just by spam moving, he managed to glitch out over the SCV somehow. Does have the Reaver and Goon coming in as a follow-up. Turret is done, but able to keep the shuttle alive and coming in for a pickup. He might just barely not lose this shuttle as well. And a lot of SCVs going down three to that Scarab. Uh, he is slowly... Wow, okay, killing the tank, and now he's just waiting for a few scarabs to finish because he ran out of scarabs, but he's still got now enough opportunity to get a lot more damage done. Going to be picking off... And the Marines aren't in the bunker as well, so the Dragoons can now just waltz into the main base. Beautiful scarab hit on that tank that just popped out as well. Full damage, no micro done, so the tank unfortunately going to go down to the phase disruption shot off that Dragoon as well. And now the SCVs are coming with the line to try and snatch that Reaver kill. 11 HP remaining on that. Uh, needs to be careful not to lose that Reaver, but right now this is almost game-ending damage damage for many already light and kind of shambles right now so yeah one tank needs to pop out here he needs one shot on that uh reaver but another reaver is crawling its way forward already so even if we manage to kill this it's not the end of this fight like we're, we have to deal with both of these reavers now this one crawling forward here looks like it's going to take a lot of damage Got to target one of those. Okay, he targets the low HP one. He picks that one off. But the other one going to go ahead and hop up into the shuttle. Going to continue its reign of terror here. Or the reign of terror that was begun by its brother. About 15 kills on that first Reaver. How many is this going to get? I don't know if there's 15 units left in this game for like... Wow, beautiful block of those SCVs though on that Dragoon trying to get the walk, the run by there. So something for Light here. Does get another shot off on that Reaver as well. He's softening up the attack of Mini a little bit, but he's already taken pretty critical damage. The Reaver's on just a little bit of HP, 11 HP. He does get the snipe with the Arc Light Cannon on that tank out of Siege mode as well. But there's another Reaver at the front door. He's trying to Siege up to try and help deal with this Reaver. But the Dragoon shooting from the back. And now the Scarab shot from the front. It kills the Marines just before they can get into the bunker as well. But everything going right for Mini right now. And the damage is still being done. Reaver now going to come to the natural expansion and put some pressure onto those SCVs there. Marines unloading from the bunker to try and deal with this, but this Reaver has a lot of hit points and shields, so what won't be enough to deal with this alone. Needs to get this tank up here to help this, but there's already a Dragoon on top of that tank. Yeah, every single time one Reaver gets taken out, there's an already another one ready to take the fight. Oh my god. One HP? Are you kidding me? Can he get a shot off? He will not. Pretty good block there, but it's not good enough. And Mini, with 10 kills now on this third Reaver. Gonna get one more? Oh my goodness. Another Reaver coming up here. The SCV is just running away. I feel like uh, Light is so dead. It's kind of ridiculous, but he's still trying to fight it out here. He loses. Oh my god. He loses all the SCVs. He waits to the very end. I was wrong. There was still... Uh, 15 more units left over. 16, in fact, the final kill count on that Reaver. Good God, that was brutal so damage. Reaver kills, yeah. Like, every single Reaver was like 23 kills, 13 kills, 19 kills. Every single Reaver had crazy amounts of damage. I mean, it was a beautiful attempt from Light to try and block the Scarab with the SCVs. If he got on the full wall off, you can actually stop the Scarabs from connecting by body blocking that. Didn't quite have a full wall off with the SCVs, though. Beautiful attempt nonetheless. Uh, yeah, well, uh, crazy play from Mini, like almost Snow-esque Reaver uh, control there. A little bit of a bungle from Light has to be said, but really impressive stuff from Mini. I like to see it. Yeah, it seems like he really didn't pick up on 
uh, the direction that the probe was coming in and, and realized that there was some sort of proxy, like you were saying, uh, not finding out about that. I mean, he almost got the turrets up in time, right? Even with the dragoons coming in and uh, trying to annoy that, but the turret wasn't close enough to the wall to prevent him from really getting in there. And Dude, what a crazy game. We get another popper here as well. I'm not sure what's going on with that one. Well, poppers instead of clappers, I guess. I guess now there's no chance of getting an all kill. Is that is that right? Maybe that's where the the all kill prize is going Maybe. up. I don't well, know. I'm just, just realized that it, they don't want to put their microphones down. So they want to be able to like you know pop and hold the microphone at the same time. I don't know. Maybe some min maxing of the casting there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump into our next one. All right, light's been eliminated, and Mini will continue on. He's the wild card, like we were saying. It's really down to the Zerg versus the Terran this week, but Mini could be the deciding factor. Yeah. Taking out that big boy Light on the Terran squad, and only Sharp remains. I think the chances of having a Zerg victory here are higher and higher. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not sure how confident Mini's feeling. He's such an emotional player that you never know what you're going to get. He is very adept at this matchup, PvZ especially, but he's very hit and miss with it. So it's you never know quite what you're going to see from him, but hopefully the performances he's had just a moment ago will be enough wind in his sails to kind of give him you know, the winning edge that he needs against someone of Hero's caliber. But I would really ha like to see a Zerg victory here. I apologize, guys. I do not remember this map's name. Um, usually we check right as the, the match is loading up, but uh, it's a fresh map pool this season, and I haven't gotten used to it just yet. We've got Hero taking the base over at the 12 o'clock. It's kind of a wild map. It's not the wildest map. I think maybe Kickback, what we just saw, maybe the craziest map that we've got in the pool right yeah. now uh that or um what was the what was the other one earlier um that we saw Sol sulky first yeah monty hall that may be the craziest map actually kickback yeah, I would say so. yeah more of a, a slightly more standard i mean we're gonna have some crazy games there but not quite as well as monty hall anyway this has got a bunch of high grounds around the uh four high grounds around the uh, middle of the map that have four ramps to each of them and then we've got these uh, sharp ramps that have just a tiny sliver of high ground no high ground in the main base it's very similar to uh, citadel in that way uh, but it does have some unique twists it's interesting that that is becoming like a, a common map feature now that kind of high ground yeah. tip at the top well, it's like MMA, like, you know, you, you just pick the best of everything and put it into one style, and that's what we're getting with map making. We're, we're experimenting with ideas, and some of the ideas just don't work, and some of them are like, oh, I kind of like that, and then you start including that into a theme, and eventually we have these evolved maps which help us, you know, hone the balance of the game while also keeping it fresh and interesting and, like, providing a, a new diverse range of approaching to play. Yeah, big shout out to the map makers out there for constantly innovating for this extremely old game we're past 25 years now and there's still so much passion in this sport there's so much uh passion not just for the players but from the map makers as well nice snipe there on the first probe denying the scout for mini to see you know whether he's going for hydralis den or for a lair he just has to guess at this point yeah, Mini being a little bit greedy, going to be throwing down that core in his natural expansion to keep his tech timings as sharp as possible, and despite losing that scouting information. And it is such a big deal, the scouting information in this matchup. Zerg basically has a straight-up advantage over Protoss unless you have information, but the weird thing about it is if you do have information, it becomes a bit more Protoss-favored, so you do see a lot of mind games and kind of juxtaposition happening in the early game, trying to get as much intel as possible. Even this Zealot coming into the third base to try and confirm how many drones are mining there and how many links have been made is so important for the pros player as they kind of min-max their builds and try and optimize for certain timings later on down the line. Mini's getting away with some pretty good min-maxing here. He got that forge a little bit later. He got the cybernetic score in the wall. Uh, and his Corsair is going to be coming out at a really nice crisp timing. He saw the amount of drones at the third. And so he should be relatively confident that there's not a Hydralis bus coming. And even if it is coming across the map, the, the distance here is going to give him a little bit of extra time 
to throw down additional cannons if he spots this with the first Corsair, and that's not going to be the case. So basically, he's just fine. He's in a good spot. He's going to be able to start adding on gateways here soon. He doesn't need to worry about adding a bunch of cannons. He might throw down a second cannon just so that he can move out and pressure with these salads, but he seems pretty content to just sit here and tech up at the moment. Yeah. I was curious if we were going to see any crazy tech out of Mini. Uh, sometimes you can do a style where you go very quickly into Citadel and uh, you don't even make that many gateways. You just make a very fast speed lock timing with just two or three gateways. And I was wondering if we were going to see any kind of like weird, like low, low army count, but very fast tech plays out of Mini. But it, it does seem like he's playing very middle, middle grounds, like very mid range. And he's going very sharp into his tech, but it doesn't look like he's like making any crazy uh, risks or anything. If, if I feel like we might see a very standard game out of both players here. One thing that Mini does more than any other Protoss player that I watch is go for large amounts of DTs in the mid game and try to bully uh, the t Zerg player, especially before they have uh, Overlord speed. I'm not sure if we're going to see right. that this game, but he went for a pretty quick Citadel and he hasn't added on those extra gateways for the additional Zealot production. So there's a chance we might see that this game. Oh, great uh, ankle breaking technique here from Mini, keeping that Corsair alive and staying away from those Scourge for now. He is in a bit of trouble uh, as it stands. He might end up getting surrounded. Okay, he actually makes the perfect corner there. And I think he will get away. Maybe take one hit from one of these Scourge, but he should be able to make it back home. I think Mini was representing the fact that he might have done the build oh, the we were talking about earlier. He actually, did he lose it? He messed up. He messed up. He turned it. Uh, All right. Zealot's coming in now. And there are a bunch of mutas to deal with this. It's barely going to get any damage whatsoever. Mini's kind of flopping around right now. And... Hardly doing anything to Hero, who's just powering up like crazy on this three base. Yeah, this is looking a little bit rough now. I mean, especially after losing the the, the air control for like losing that first Corsair, it's going to be a little bit rough. You, the, the problem for the Protoss player is not so much that he lose the Corsair, it's that he can't really move out with the Corsairs until he has six. So he has no scouting information. He doesn't know how many muters lists are being made. He doesn't know like anything right now. So it kind of puts him in the dark and he's going to have to hedge his bets, make cannons in his main and natural mineral lines. He doesn't know if it's a straight up Ogozo, for example. So he's, he's really unprepared for what Hero could do for him. And the hero, inversely, can kind of do whatever he wants, either make mass amounts of Hydralisks, which he's already setting up to do, getting that sick patchery. But he also could just go straight up Okazerg here. He has got three gases mining away, so he could make a lot of Mulisks and a lot of Scourge and just try and bowl Mini over. Yeah, knowing that Mini has to stay home right now, he does not have uh, a force to move out with. He doesn't have any Zealots to work with. It means that Hero can make a kind of crazy amount of drones. He could just purely produce drones up to about 45 and then transition into a massive six hatch hydra play he's adding on a bunch of creep colonies is this because he's gonna go ogre zerg i, I feel like that might be the case right you don't add this many sunkins if you're gonna just build hydra right i think so and with the three gas it does really seem to indicate that it, nothing else really makes sense right now he wants to dump his gas in somewhere and going into six hatchery makes me think that he wants to dump it first into muta scourge and then into mass hydra and with the sunken's back at home he can keep these muas a little bit more aggressive and keep his options open tries to get the surround on some of those um uh, uh, corsairs here but he has got an attack vector with the, the scourge on the southern threshold might be able to cut off the retreat of these um Corsairs and just come and swing in, into the main base maybe with the muters while the Scourge zone out the Corsairs to the north. And there's only one cannon finish over here, so the, the probes will have to evacuate to the natural expansion at the very least. He did make an Archon earlier in the natural expansion, but the probes are currently glitched out on the buildings. He might get some of those probe kills for free if he's paying attention. Meanwhile, the, uh, the Zelt uh, counterattack is unsuccessful due to the Sim City. So, so far, this is going really um, hero's way here, Sam. Yeah, hero did a great job. Um chasing those Corsairs, but Mini, conversely, I mean, he managed to pull away uh, a few of those Scourge, make him chase with the Scourge, and then allow the other Corsairs to start to fight and actually kill those off. The Nexus is so low, but he has to pull back. There's way too many 
Uh, Mutas are there's way too many Corsairs here. They will just ravage the Mutas. He's gonna try and fight this, but he's allowing his Mutas to stack up. That's 10 Mutas, and they're all taking a huge amount of damage. 82 health on that, though. Shun, like, why not leave one Muta just to hit that or something? I, 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 for, for, for a second, I thought he was doing that intentionally to bait the Corsairs into engaging the Mutas because he wanted to trade with the Corsairs. I don't know, though. That makes no sense. Like, I, he definitely could have killed that. Like, I, this is very strange. Like, it's almost like he wants the Nexus to still be alive so we can come back into the main base again now. I don't know. Well, he's going to hit right now. We've got one storm it's going to be thrown down on some of these scourge great connections with the scourge so many courses just went down that's going to be one shot this is going to be like one or two shot as well there's the nexus going down and all of the uh, corsairs are gone pretty rough situation here for mini he's going to gamble on an attack here into the third those are some really good shots from the Archon. Six kills on that Archon already. Seven kills now. As the Zealots tank the damage, Archon just dishing it out here. Finally does get targeted down. Uh, there's two sunken colonies remaining. There's one sunken colony left over now. Mutas are heading back home after dealing all the damage that they wanted in the main base of the Protoss. They're going to come back here to try and save. Mini's going to lose his whole army, and he doesn't have a, nat or a main base nexus. This is really, really rough. Yeah, that was a beautiful drone drill from Hero with just two drones glitching out that Archon, mitigating much of the potential damage of that Sonic Shockwave just coming in and cleaning up the entire drone line. Fortunately, didn't take too much damage, only just like a, a half a dozen or so drones going down. Hero can easily remake that. He's got a lot of hatchery production. Mini's taken a lot of damage and having to retake his main base, he's slowed down so exponentially at this point in the game. And now his natural is going to be mined out all the, all the more faster as well. And his, his economic path in this game, and the curve will be even more lopsided. And the ebb and flow has been disrupted enough that Hero should be able to abuse him now. Come in here and snipe a few High Templars here and there try to pick off what little uh, gas units there are uh, fielded by mini while also snagging some of these probes that are transferring to and from the, the main base that's being rebuilt main base is coming back up but it's a uh, just a, a glimmer in mini's eye right now he needs to get that operational uh, like right now whereas hero is slowly moving on to a fourth base his economy is still fantastic he didn't lose you know, all of his drones at that third, just a few went, ended up going down there and his Hydra production is in full swing. Mini is just, he's trying to put something together here, but what can he do, Shun? Uh, he's still got to worry about a potential follow-up or Ogre Zerg play. He has no Corsairs. Yeah. So that's There's a no threat. There's a Hydra threat. There's Lurker yeah, threat. There's no cookie cutter answer. Like he just has to make high Templars and hope for the best. And either way, it can still go bad against him because all the hero has to do is contain Mini. He doesn't actually have to kill him. He can literally just like set up a lurker contain and just squeeze him out of the game. Keep on contained onto two bases will be more than a death sentence for Mini at this stage in the game. And well, hero can retake his own fourth base and just produce units nonstop and even just stay on battle zerg mode, making nothing but hydras and lurkers, mutas and scourge nonstop, and just trying to maintain the contain and. This is like pure Zealot Templar, so these Lurkers are going to have so much cost efficiency. It's going to be insane. There's not going to be enough storms to deal with all of them. And with the Dragoon transition being so slow behind this, there's not much hope here. He's even now just starting Dragoon Range as an afterthought, and he might even lose the core before the Dragoon Range finishes. This is just kind of writing on the wall type situation here. Yeah, how long... Are we going to wait until that uh, Observer gets to the field, right? Like, that Observer um, is so necessary. Okay, does he finish the range? I think it might have just finished in time. So that's actually really important. Oh, and he's going to start a new core. He does need to keep making Dragoon, so he, of course, needs that. But I think he did finish that upgrade. So crucial that that actually went through. Another gateway is going to fall here. He's casting storms and getting some damage on these lurkers, but the amount of hydras that's coming behind this, I just don't think he's going to have the storm remaining to deal with them. 
Yeah, but basically that. I mean, he's, he has to churn out so many Dragoons to have any hope of breaking out. He, and even that will be difficult. He's just going to GG out. It makes sense. It's such an unplayable situation for the Protoss player. And Hero was very patient and willing to drag that out no matter how long was necessary. And would have put Mini into a checkmate scenario pretty much no matter what happened. So kind of understandable for him to tap out there. And it looks like we're just going to be down to Sharp coming up here. Can he dispatch Hero and Jadong all by his lonesome? himself it's gonna be a tall order sam okay with mini being eliminated protoss is off the roster and it's all down to this sharp the last turn player left alive can he clutch it out or will we see what we've been hoping for here shun which is a tiebreaker match or some yeah. some sort of something like ace match something has to be done if both these squads wind out the eight weeks with uh, exactly even scores yeah and i'm excited to see it i want to see it so I, I do hope that zerg win terran takes the second spot and we do get to see what kind of tie break situation we're going to be having whether that's going to be an ace match or some kind of weird best of three scenario i have no idea what they would have in store for us for a tie break scenario very curious to see it i'm also curious to know if the map makers could maybe invest in some kind of better pizza cutting tool to you know divvy up these slices in the center of the map because these are not even slices sam you know what i mean like if both of us get four of these slices one of us is definitely not getting the same amount of calories you know what i mean <laughs> dominator is the map a remake of gladiator three player Gladiator is what we like to call it. And yes, the slices, the pizza slices are not quite as symmetrical as that Gladiator map. Uh, they had to make some changes in order to finagle this into a three-player situation. It actually makes sense. So um, definitely some corners were cut. And thus, uh, the three-player Gladiator was born. Sharp here getting in. He's going to scout sees what hero's up to it's just a regular 12 hatch play with the follow-up uh, gas coming online now and he's just gonna open up with a one rex fe so very standard opener on both sides with a nice little wall here for sharp he's found himself in the correct position to give himself a nice little advantage with that wall make sure that nothing comes in he can pump out a pure SCV here early on and cut a lot of Marines to get his economy going relatively right. fast. Now I'm curious to see if we'll see a fast engineering bay out of Sharp or if you will go for a two racks timing here. I also be, would be very curious to see if Hero wants to kill this SCV so early because he's considering a two hatch lurker build and he sees the wall in as well from the Terran. He knows there's not a lot of room to build bunkers as well here in this natural expansion because of this wall in. So a potential two hatch lurker could be effective here but it's also not really a strong choice against pro gamers unfortunately like it's just so easy to micro back against those lurkers with the marines and if you do open up something like a two racks academy it can just absolutely dominate those uh, lurker openings so we probably won't be seeing something like that out of hero but i would be excited to see something crazy it would be fun to see but sharp does open up there's your answer he opens with the ebay in his main, he will be going early plus one. And slowly incrementing out these Marines until he switches things up into either three or four racks production. And gets a bit of a later tech going for himself. I doubt we'll see double eBay here once again. That's like a once in a blue moon build. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, light put together. I guess kind of last minute maybe just to try it out or something i'm not sure where he was go or where he got that from but uh it's just not a standard way to play and i doubt we'll see sharp utilize that would be would be pretty funny though if he did pull it out right like if light lights yeah. over there coaching him talking in his ear telling him how to do it <laughs> i mean it'd be really funny if it like becomes like a meme build that terran players start throwing out to catch zerg players off guard like haha i've got one one at a weird timing now what right uh, yeah it'd be kind of interesting to see as like a bit of a meme way of playing terran does have a lot of strengths in the mid game that has a power spike and, and he did win the game with it eventually mm -hmm. after securing uh, a foothold in the game despite having a bit of an upgrade disadvantage in the later stages so yeah maybe there's a little bit of 
credit to a build of that caliber. I, I don't know if it's something you want to do all the time. It's a little bit of a gimmicky build. It's something you want to pull out, like, you know, one in four, one in five games to kind of like finagle like a cheeky win out of the Zerg and uh, kind of like, you know, keep him guessing what you could be doing. It's going to be a four racks follow up here for Sharp with a hero. Not going for 2.5 hatch. He actually went for a third hatch over at bottom right, which is uh, the entrance to the other main base. So he's taken another natural. A little like bit of it. an interesting choice there, right? It does allow you, or it gives you the, the opportunity to grab a free fourth, but it's a bit tough to hold on to that location. It's very far away from the Zerg natural, and it's, you know, equidistant here from the Terran natural. So it might be a little bit harder to defend, but if Hero can make it happen, then he's going to be in a pretty good position. It's just... Will Sharp be able to break through him with this big timing, the one plus one timing that's just about to finish up here? Well, I love um, that Sharp's taking this state of the game seriously because he knows it's a bit of a tough situation to hold this. It's very easy for the muters to kind of abuse the Terran at certain angles. So he has built a bunker to protect these two depots up at the top so he can just kind of commit all of his Marines to this production line for the time being. So he's very safe right now despite taking a bit of damage from uh, Hero's exceptional muter control. And he's still going. And Hero, Hero is one of the best in the business at um, controlling his muters while he's macroing. He's not necessarily the best at controlling the muters but he's very good at hitting all his strides back at home while he's controlling the muters which is what makes him such a scary player wow going after the engineering bay here it isn't actually researching so you can just lift it and float it back the repair is going to come through marines are heading out on the map plus one is done range and stim should be there as well let's see if he can take this fighter will hero bring forward enough lings to crush this attack he's actually built quite a few and he has that third gas online. He's not really saturating that just yet. He's building tons of lings and bringing the Mutalists to the front. I think he's going to want to try and crush this first move out. It really does seem like he's producing a lot of units, although he did start two Sunkins back at home and his natural. Um, hasn't completed those yet, but maybe he wants to, to do more of a passive play than what I'm thinking. Well, I think I think he's kind of hedging his bets because he didn't know that Sharp was going to be this patient with his bow. He did rejoin his forces a lot. And now Hero's just going to backstab into the main base with the muters while making the, the Sunkens back at home. Sharp is kind of calling the bluff, though. He's just committing his forces out onto the map, seeing if he can find a timing against these Sunkens. There might not be enough finished up. He's got two done with two on the way, and that's Creep Conley uh, in the back line as well. So it will be a total of five Sunkens eventually, but for the time being, only a few of them are finished up. So there might be a timing for him to just run in right here, right now, Four of them just barely finishing up in time. There is four medics available to Sharp, but with the drones coming with the line, the fifth sunken fish, I don't think he's going to find any kind of penetration there in the natural expansion. And meanwhile, he is taking a lot of damage into the main base. He could run around to the right-hand side and just, like, pick off the gas and ignore this sunkens, but he's trying to commit to them to finish these last two off. And a few lings going to be coming out of the hatchery to help push back these marines and prevent any critical damage being done to Hero. Inversely, having accomplished quite a lot of SCV kills, and harassment of his own with his muters. I'm not so sure. I, I, I get that the uh, supply is very similar, but look, all the drones were killed at the natural for Hero. He, he doesn't well, have he any. I thought, he, I thought he transferred some of them. No, I don't think he has any left at this point. Like, he's, he's mining just barely off of the gas, and he's only got about two or three drones over at the uh, oh, third right. base as well. So I thought he transferred them away. It, I think he was actually fighting with a lot of them. That was a really close hold. The sunken colony at the back line, there was like a second line, that sunken colony right there, the one that hasn't been damaged at all, that was not firing for most of that fight. So the positioning there really hurting Hero. He was throwing them down, of course, in a panic, trying to get them up as quickly as possible, but that positioning really made it a, a close hold against Sharps and Marines that almost broke through. If those Lings hadn't popped out at the very last second, he probably would have killed those last two Sunkins. As it stands, Hero is re-droning, but you can see Sharp is now getting ahead in supply, uh, despite it was yeah. being even just a few seconds ago, because these drones, I mean, we have to invest into this or we're just not going to have a late game. Well, if there was, yeah, less economy lost by Hero in that attack, I think he would have been a lot healthier state. But as it stands, it, yeah, it's looking a little bit dry. 
Uh, he can't really spend or utilize his gas. That that might still still be okay for him later on, as long as he doesn't just straight up die. Um, he will be able to eventually spend all that gas and be in an okay game state. But it does look like he missed out on opportunity to be in a pretty sizable lead, uh, having to commit that many drones to the defense. I thought he like sent half to defend, half transferred to the main. But yeah, losing that many does put him in a bit of a daunting situation, a bit of an uphill battle. Now, Sharp isn't necessarily the best in late game TVZ as well, so I kind of feel like Sharp has to leverage his advantage right here, right now, and push for more of an advantage rather than playing passively. Yeah, absolutely. He needs to get out here, and he's doing just that. Pushing forward, there's nothing over at this third base, so forcing drones that are just now being made to replenish the drones that were lost into making sunken colonies is a great way to continue to leverage that advantage. Looks like two or three sunken colonies are going to be built over there by Hero as he tries to transition into a hive, try to get some uh, lurkers out on the field. He doesn't have any out here just yet, but he's doing a pretty decent job with the mutas that he still has at the moment. Picking off a few marines here and there, abusing the, uh, the map uh, features right now, forcing these marines to run around this one little uh, cliff is actually harming Sharp pretty significantly. Yeah, I mean, all, all good battle commanders need to abuse the geography as much as possible, San, and Hero is doing a very great job of that, kind of abusing Sharp left and right. Someone like Light might be able to be a bit more switched on in how he's controlling his bar units, but uh, someone like Sharp is a little bit more susceptible to the kind of tricks of someone like Hero, so we see him getting a tiny bit outmaneuvered in those engagements out on the map, but still holding his own 20 supply ahead of Hero right now to file them out on the way and about to finish up we do have a stacking of two lurkers underneath this hatchery it's still a breakable position to be honest only two lurkers and three sunkens it's not invincible but i think eventually he will stabilize and we will see a more more normal game maybe sharp will have to invest into some drop ships or something to try and catch here off guard here first couple of irradiates are ready the hive is done so we sh should have a nidus coming up in just a second if it's late though with two two radiates that kills two of these four, three lurkers there's yep. only be one lurker and two sunken colonies available there's i think he just started the nidus this is late he's very late on this and another radiate comes down there's just gonna be one lurker here in a moment he pulls the trigger he's gonna just run in right now target that target this down as quickly as he can the mutas are gonna come in from behind there is still one sunken, but I think Sharp's done it. He's breaking all the way through a little bit late on this Nidus, and Hero's going to pay the price. Wow, I mean, he's not target firing down the drones just yet, but now he does. He starts to push the issue. There is six mutas left trying to help desperately clean up some of these rings. Two lings hatching. Some lurkers in retreat from the, the, the rear actually coming into support as well. And one of the science vessels going down. There's another counterattack at the natural expansion from Sharp as well, but he's not finding anything eventful there. And Hero somehow, like, just dancing with death right now. And he's saying not today, Saiyan. And he's doing a great job of just, like, kind of, like, thwarting the effort to shot but he's still only 50s applied to 90 so if he can catch some of these lurkers before they're, while they're at position maybe something can be done he is getting a few of these lurkers here and there but there's still just barely enough remaining in reserve for hero to hold on and instead we're going to be seeing a third base being taken by the turn player and the game's going to continue my goodness i can't believe hero held on to that one lurker two sunken colonies and a dream just barely managed to survive that attack and Sharp now, I mean, he's in a bit of a limbo here. He's not really sure what to do. He's going to load up some drop ships, try to get in on one of these bases. But where do you drop right now? There's not a lot of space, maybe in the main, but there's Scourge already prepared, possibly here into the third. But, you know, there's Lurkers already prepared. You can drop in there all you want, but we're going to have uh, Dark Swarm in just a second as well. I guess dropping into the fourth just to pr make sure that that doesn't get taken too quickly while he macros up. I don't know. What do you think, Shun? Where is he going to go with these drops? Yeah, I think you kind of have to like pressure the fourth base potential with the, the drops while taking your own fourth base. There's no way you're going to find damage against the Zerg player, probably with these drops, unless you're just trying to deny the fourth base going up. So I think that's the most optimal play. Keep a very tiny auxiliary force containing the Zerg natural while we drop the main base here on this three o'clock position and taking our own fourth base at nine. I think this is an absolute stellar play from Sharp, and I think it's one of the best plays possible. 
Is there an opportunity to switch into mech here for Sharp? Do you think that's a possibility? Uh, he loves to make he likes he likes to make uh, vultures in this matchup. Yeah. He's gonna go after I mean, the Nidus probably... Canal. Oh my Ooh. god, he's gonna get the Nidus. He does pick that off. He eats a huge plague, but uh, I mean that's totally worth. Maybe he can bust through here now. I mean, just yeah, just just the fact that he got that Nidus. There's a window now where it's gonna take a long time to build that Nidus and connect it again. He's gonna try and get some units into the match room. Not only beautiful connections by Hero though, with those scars taking two of those dropships out. He is still in the position to kill this uh, Hydralis again and be annoying at the very least. While also now trying to come into the natural expansion. There's only one lurker underneath the Overlord, I think. So if he gets this um, already on the Defiler, there's the potential for him to come into the natural expansion and start laying siege to the Zerg player and frustrate. Hero. He's only just now stabilizing on the right hand side. Is going to be catching this dropship on the exit. But now we see um, Sharp maybe gearing up to lay siege to the, the north base, or at the very least keep Hero guessing where he needs to invest. Oh, he just oh. barely saves Hydra with 3 HP! 3 HP! Wow. All right. He keeps that alive, and Sharp has been denied. He's lost a lot of his map control now, but I don't think Hero's in any position to move out and do anything with it. Uh, oh, wait. He just. Did he, what, did he kill that? He killed it from the yeah. low ground? Okay, Sharp yeah, came up. <laughs> Finish it off. This game's wild. This is a wild game, man. We've got lots of red flowing around the map right now. 151 supply for Sharp. He is gearing up into just a huge late game SK Terran style. Uh, no factories on the ground right now for a mech transition. He's not even going to be making those uh, vultures, which are kind of his signature, right? Sharp yeah. is known for the Vulture play. He often pulls it out in uh, delicate situations versus Zerg players in the late game. But in this case, he's just going to rely heavily on his Marine Medic. Now, Hero is super strong with the way he uses his Defilers. He's scary with that unit. And he should, you know, as time goes on, find more and more ways to get value out of those Defilers and eventually whittle down Sharp. But if the edge is too big sharp will just overwhelm despite you know perfect control out of those units yeah and we might see you know uh, additional starports being made for either more vessel production or maybe even uh, battle cruisers here as well to stop putting pressure onto some of these gas bases of hero hero desperately trying to get a foothold on these prongs these pizza slices to kind of keep the terrain as far back from his uh, economic line as possible so he's not at risk of dying any moment but right now i don't think there's a defiler in position to to to, to Dark Swarm because he's hiding on the other side. So he's just, oh, he's getting, he's pretty much getting every single Defiler that pops out on the right hand side. He doesn't even get a, um, a Plague or a Dark Swarm down. So he might try and come in here into this natural expansion or at least force more Defilers out of their hiding spot so he can keep irradiating the Defilers over and over and over again and finding his moment to finally strike and punish uh, Hero here while he's expanding non stop. He's also taking six o'clock now. Beautiful Plague though on that whole stack of vessels. Great plagues coming out here. Dark Swarm's gonna hold back the Terran player for now. I almost feel like, oh, wait a second, hold on. Big drop here into the fourth base. Is he gonna be able to deny this? It's really looking that yeah. way. Hero just doesn't have the army supply right now to deal with uh, the attacks coming in from so many different directions. He's gonna lose his Nidus Canal again. The first Ultra pops out. It's only got one armor though. That will end up going down really quickly. Uh, if he actually takes an engagement with these marines that are on plus three, two armor advantage, or two upgrade advantage right now for Sharp. That is wow. near insurmountable. And Hero just has to get another Nidus up here. He's trying his best, but... I mean, this is, this is dire situation now for him. He's just about maxed out, Sharp is. I'm really impressed with Sharp, and it kind of just like reiterates like how much I believed in his game plan. Like as soon as he started to want to isolate that fourth base while expanding himself, I thought, yeah, that's 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 the optimal play, and it does seem to be like the absolutely a checkmate scenario for Hero. And here, here of all people, I would have expected 
to have some answer to this, but he just hasn't. And we just see a pure macro Terran behind this. So even though um, we finally see Ultras coming out onto the map with 4-1 upgrades, it's not going to matter. Like He's going to hit all his own upgrade timings and have just a crazy critical mass of bio to target down those Ultras and blanket them with a Radiates or support with Defense Matrixes whenever he needed to. There's not much hope for Hero to claw his way back into this game due to the exceptional decision-making here from Sharp, who is still denying this fourth base being taken taken and forcing instead other expansions to be thrown up at 12 o'clock instead yeah this is the hope for hero right now is to take one of these other bases um less optimal more difficult to defend uh but really he's just gonna throw uh, his eggs in whatever basket remains because there's very little space left for him in this game four drop ships still out in the middle of the map they haven't been scourged down the lack of gas because of that the lack of that uh, extra base in the fourth uh, means that he just doesn't really have much scourge he hasn't been able to make enough scourge to deal with all of these vessels and all of the drops that have been coming in from each direction running in here with the D-Matrix Firebat. He's going to go after the Nidus Canal again. It's so annoying to keep losing this Nidus Canal over and over. Uh, Hero, he's going to find a location where Hero's just not quite defended properly and break through in one of those spots. He finds the base over here in the top right. It will be denied. The fourth is going to go down in the regular fourth location though. Let's see if he can hold on to that or is Sharp going to get another drop in that position? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I've been really impressed by Sharp this game. Even like making these like bunkers with fire bats at these expansions to give them a little bit of extra insurance and defense against any kind of shenanigans that Hero can throw at him. Is having to temporarily evacuate this base at six o'clock, but it's not really going to matter. Everything is just looking like it's going to be a potential Sharp victory here. Hero is one of the players, one of the few players that could somehow navigate this into a win. But I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I'm not seeing it more and more. We're going to be seeing a big Lotto drop. Uh, play being loaded up here as well maybe if all if scourge can find perfect connections on those drops yes before they unload maybe we can see a bit of a tempo swing here for hero but i'm not seeing it just just yet we will be seeing battle cruisers out soon pressuring these precious so, um, gas expansions of hero and you will not have enough gas to both kill the battle cruisers and still produce the utility units that he needs to keep fighting against sharp's army head on absolutely maxed here sharp's gonna go for that big drop play into the fourth one one more time uh the scourge have not been baited so they're here they're ready to go he's gonna kill one of the the drop ships but the rest still remain that's crazy just pure marine gonna drop out here and kill this hatchery so quickly hero barely has time to react at the same time breaking in towards the natural the radiates have cleared all of these lurkers and now it's just pure ling trying to clear this out while sharp is breaking in he's gonna kill the nidus one more time that's got to be the end hero is gonna get taken wow. down unreal this finisher sharp this actually bring like it back this is unironically a masterclass in like tvz like he's not actually attacking hero directly at any point in time it's just pure like laying siege to the zerg applying pressure waiting for weakness to be shown and exploiting that weakness and when there's enough resistance given by hero he lets off the pressure just for a little bit and finding opportunities elsewhere it's really stellar stuff from sharp here absolutely finally plus three armor is done for hero so he's on even footing uh, for the first time with those attack upgrades but the power spike that he's supposed to have with the four the base is coming online it's gone and we're already here at 23 minutes the main and natural gases have mined out your third gas is getting low and we still don't have a fourth gas online it's really painful here for hero but he's gonna try okay actually he's still got this how much gas is remaining in that that's got to be low right yeah it's very low um but i mean sharp's just basically been like stealing hero's lunch money all game long and just like buying milkshakes and drinking the milkshakes in front of hero the entire game just bullying bullying hero this entire game and pushing him off of this last base for the final time there's one ultra here how much health does it have can it actually fight all of these fire bats fire bats really not great at fighting 
uh, Ultra. So, you know, many of them are going to die trying to take this down. But I think he may still get this. Oh, no. A little bit of hope here for Hero as he maybe gets this next gas online. It's a fleeting hope, though, at best. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of uh, wind in the sails for Hero. But you're right about the Firebats versus Ultras. It's like a Dragon Ball Z RPG map or something. They just never die, and you're watching them shoot forever. But now with the target firing of these Marines onto these Ultras, there's not enough critical mass of Zerg units here to fight the Terran anymore. I think oh. this might be... He tries to get the Consume and doesn't able to do so. So no Dark Swarm, no Plague, no Nidus Canal. GG finally called, and the Zerg are going to be victorious here in this week at KCM. So we're going to be seeing some kind of tie breaker here saying what's it gonna be i'm kind of excited um i don't know what you're talking about shin sharp just won that game so we're gonna go on to sharp versus jadong next uh <laughs> no tiebreaker just yet i mean are we gonna get denied again i feel like we've been so close to it so many times and it's just never happened <laughs> we're gonna go and find out whether it like, if, if Jadong doesn't win this one, I'm going to be upset, actually, Shun. This is going to be frustrating, but Sharp's just been doing so well, I wouldn't be surprised. I'll take the blame. Jadong, our final Zerg player coming out now. We're on Radeon once again. Cross-map situation versus Sharp, dude. Sharp really impressive against Hero. Is Jadong the man that can take him down and bring us to that even scenario, that tiebreaker situation? I mean, I, I bloody well hope so, saying I'm going to be kicking myself. And I'm going to, I'll, I'll, don't worry, guys, I'll take personal responsibility if Jadong <laughs> doesn't win because I made an absolute goofball error of like mis, misrepresenting the, what was going to happen at the end of the last game. So if, if it does happen, I'll take full blame, guys, don't worry. You definitely jinxed it pretty good. Yeah. But yeah. we'll see. We'll see if Jadong can bring it back. Oh, come on, my boy. JD certainly if this was like 10 years ago i mean no contest jd would have been able to take this down but jd in 2024 jadong is he still the powerhouse that we imagine him to be that we hope that he will once again become he's sending out his early drone he's just gonna check and see if there's an eight racks out here as he gets into his 12 hatchery play I mean, I hope so, saying. Unfortunately, Jadong is much more like a player like Mini in the sense of he's a much more hit and miss with his performance levels. So you don't necessarily know what Jadong you're going to get. You might see absolutely exemplary play or he's playing out of his mind, or you might see somewhat of a mediocre Zerg at this level. So you never quite know what you're going to get with Jadong, unfortunately. But I'm hoping it's going to be the former and he's going to play an absolute amazing game here. Both entertain us and show us this tie-breaking scenario, which I'm still kind of like anticipating which i now think we're not gonna get <laughs> yeah uh it's <laughs> it's crazy how many times we've missed on that and this time it's so close they had so far away sharp standing in the way of of our dream here shin that's that's our joint dream to actually yeah. find out what is gonna happen uh, it's it's should, like a kid at Christmas. Yeah, should should those those scores line up right at the end? I mean, we're, we've been watching that graph grow uh, season after season, and they've never never have the two met at the very end of week number eight. Right. But this, I mean, we, we want to see it. It's, it's good for our OCD. I, I do apologize <laughs> for making that mistake, guys, but I'm just so pumped at seeing it that I'm I'm just trying to manifest it. I'm trying to manifestation. I want to manifest that reality for us, but I might have just done the opposite. I might have jinxed it, and now, like, I've done the Matrix thing of, like, would you still knock the vase over if I hadn't said anything kind of reality situation going on? I'm, because right now I said something. Maybe we won't see that. I hope, so. I hope not, Sam. So. I hope not as well, but uh, I'll just use my own Matrix quote, my favorite one. What happened, happened and couldn't have happened any other way. And why? Because we're still alive. Still alive. Yeah, boy. Here we go. Sharp pulling out the same exact build. He's going for a plus one uh, early timing here at the quick eBay. From him means he's going to be moving out with a much stronger force in the mid game, but he will not have a timing to force any sort 
of Sunken Colony play out of Jadong until quite a bit later. The second Barracks is now coming up. Uh, likely we'll see another four racks out of him because it's just such a strong way to play. It gives you so much power and pressure over the Zerg player in the mid game. Look at Jadong taking this bottom right hand corner. Is that really where we want to put our, our hatchery here I mean, at the third? It's a little bit risky, I'm not going to lie. But I also think it subverts expectations. Mm. I actually feel like Sharp won't check that for some time. Because I don't think right. that Sharp will expect it to be placed there. I think that's like the third or fourth spot that he's going to check. Right. So I think that, that's actually a wise spot to put it. Because it will negate any potential timings of shutting it down pre-muter. Because he needs to identify it to be able to shut this down pre-muter, right? Right. So like, I, as a result, I feel like he's guaranteed to save it no matter what. Because Sharp will not expect it to be there makes sense sharp scanning out around the map it looks like he just checked the uh, spire here and the timing on the eggs gives him perfect information on when he needs to start these turrets which is right now as the meters are popping it's gonna get these going and with the four racks play once again should have a significant amount of marines to deal with this first attack, but no range likely done just yet. Jadon going to get in here and can he get as much damage as Hero got picking off a whole bunch of marines and slowing down this push out? Or will Sharp just cruise here into the mid game? Oh, I would love to see some fantastic micro out of Jadon. We know he's capable of it. One of the best in the business, or at least once upon a time was with his mutilus control. There's obviously a lot more shaky compared to his heyday, but still able to potentially just pick apart Sharp here. If he can just create one tiny pocket, he comes in here, picks off one of these turrets at the bottom, for example, before the repair goes off. Now he can start to exploit this pocket more, come in here, kill some of these SCVs. He needs about six SCV kills, roughly, to be really confident going into the mid game. And he's trying to secure that now. He's, he's already halfway there. He's got about three so far, but now he's gonna like put pause to that because he needs to kind of get map control again and kind of track this bow that's moving out across the map and threatening some kind of counter player. We still have no sunken so we need to rely purely on our muta ling here to make sure that we can shut down any attempts from sharp to come out to the map sharp gonna chase this back great control here so far from jadong okay not as good there taking quite a bit of damage not really dishing it back at all but hasn't lost even a single mutalist thus far there we go finally first mutalist first blood there for sharp taking out one of those mutas from the stack but it's still a really strong stack from jadong and sharp's gonna stick around this natural wait for his reinforcement lines to come out just threatening the counter attack is enough here to keep jadong out of his mineral line at least and allow these fact the factory to finish and the transition to begin here for sharp yeah almost catching this top turret does get a repair on that stopping that from burning Jadon wants to keep opening up these positions, but also wants to be a little bit careful about how he navigates that one wrong step and he will take too much damage on these mutas and then all of the threat of the mutas will evaporate. He wants to maintain this threat of the mutas and not lose too much of the hit points as he's maneuvering around to keep these marines pinned back and keep the game state under control. He's making a lot of marine, a lot of mutalisks and lings here coming across the map. Maybe once they get a cleanup on aisle 5 on this bioforce in a few moments and meanwhile trading up the low HP mutas for fresh fresh one so we can keep on the onslaught at maximum health he's just about ready to hit this from both sides the pincer attack gonna come through for jadong here in just a moment is he waiting for a few more links maybe another group of mutas is picking off a few stragglers here at the back lowering the combat power of this little bio force uh to the point where he's re ready to swallow it up it seems like he's just about at that point now, but his mutas are starting to fall. He's down to just eight. Gonna split off a few damaged ones, I think, and put some more into the stack, some healthy ones into the stack. Jadong seems to be you know, a little bit hesitant about taking a fight with this, a full-on fight. He's trying to get his Hydralis out and get the Lurkers into position rather than you know, continuously building mutas and lings and trying to swallow this up. 
Oh, there's a chance that Sharp just bowls him over before the Lurkers are finished here. He's only just now starting to make the creeps, and the Lurker aspect hasn't yet finished. We do not have any Lurkers morphing just yet. Sharp's identified a critical timing here. Only one stack of mutas are standing between Sharp and Victory. Finally, the Lurkers are morphing, but it might be too little too late. Sunken's only just now finishing up. They get targeted down as well, and these others will be uh, shortened down their hate points. They finish with just one hit point and die anyway. So now we're just purely reliant on these mutas and Lurkers to defend, and I think Sharp might actually just barely have enough here to push through and get the kill on Jadong. And I think we might not be seeing that tiebreaker after all, Sam. Oh my god. Four mutas remain. There's the lurkers popping out. They all get gunned down immediately. Sharp just too good. The timings here so strong with the plus one armor. Even if those lurkers got underground, the amount of uh, spines they'd have to hit, just not feasible here for Jadong to hold on. He's down now to two bases. Most players would tap out, but Jadong, he's a fighter. He's going to stick it in, out for now. Even just at half the supply of Sharp, he's going to try to find a way to deal some damage and get back into this game. I just, I don't, I don't see it, Shin, do you? Like, yeah, what is he going to no, pull out here? I mean, he'd have to get like some hold position lurker kills on some of this bio force or something fancy to kind of tempo swing his way back into the game. It's not going to be easy either way. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see it happening without any um, some kind of like backdoor or like uh, yeah, hold position lurker. He's trying to come in here as this lurker's finishing up, deceiving on top of this bio force, but the trades aren't quite good enough. He does also pick off that one lurker before heading northwards towards a natural expansion and forcing a retreat potentially on these lurkers as well. He's also got science vessels to kind of chase around these lurkers now. He won't be able to get that hold position lurker value uh, that I was hoping for earlier. Now that the vessels can sweep for the lurkers out on the map so it looks like sharp is just gonna slowly but surely pressure jadon but jadon is setting up a base in the top left and getting um anidas canal and defiler tech so theoretically if sharp wasn't wasn't aware of this base in the top left and he got anidas canal set up maybe he'd be okay but sharp's well on top of that and he's gonna shut this base down in the top left before there's any hopes of anidas canal being connected up here i think yeah that's the problem right there double irradiate goes down and now sharp can just walk through with a small group of marines you know send f three five marines up to the top left it deals with the hatchery and leave the rest out on the map to keep on pressuring oh, almost getting a vessel i heard him get one but i'm not yeah. able to get any more and i mean this just gets worse and worse jadon uh, he's dealing with the problem that all zergs face when they're on even bases with the terran players that there are vessels on the map that continuously kill all of your gas units and you just don't have the gas required to to build anything, really. That's not just going to get irradiated right. and killed immediately. Yeah, I mean, this is looking pretty dire for Jadon, unfortunately. Uh, there is still a chance that Sharp somehow blunders the game and Jadon plays like a god, of course, but that, that is such a very razor-thin margin right now. As long as Sharp kind of dots his I's, crosses his T's, and doesn't do anything crazy, he should be able to navigate this into a pretty comfortable win. Jadong's trying to get his natural third up and running by pushing out to this bridge, but he's just not quite there in time. Sharp's always just a few seconds and a one or moves ahead of him at every junction in this game, and it's just going to be a nightmare situation for Jadong to try and find some kind of purchase in this game to go forward. He's trying to keep these lurkers out on the map to maybe keep the hopes of maybe securing this 12 o'clock as a third potentially, but I don't think... Oh, he's managed to escort a drone over to the top left with these two lurkers as well, helping protect from these marines in the high ground, but it's still a very weird situation for Jadong. Yeah, even with getting these lurkers over here and the drone into the top left, we could just see the exact same thing happen once again. You'll just come over here with the vessels, get the two irradiates down, and GG is called. GG. Yeah, Sharp takes it home here for the Terran squad, and we will not be getting our tiebreaker. What a sad day. Jadong just not able to pull it out here for us in the end. Yeah, now... Would Sharp still have tipped over the vase if we didn't say anything about it? Ah, uh, what a shame it is to see these two lines diverging at the end, but Terran definitely well-deserved win here. Sharp clutching it out, so key having him in this lineup. Uh, he has just been such a beast in 2023-2024. Oh, absolutely. He's been in that... Uh 
pretty much like a, one of the main assets of the Terran squad and he's really been shining especially with a slightly lackluster performance on Protoss not able to get on top of him he's kind of had his moment to shine and shine brightly he is uh, and yeah it's really unfortunately like you know we got the glitch in the matrix we didn't see the tiebreaker that we wanted maybe I shouldn't have said about them breaking the vase and then the vase when it got broken it is what it is unfortunately <laughs> I'll take full responsibility for jinxing that guys so no tiebreaker here. Taryn going to go to the finals. It'll be a ZVP semifinals. It's not over for the Protoss race. If they manage to take down uh, Zerg in that semis, they will go into the finals, have a shot at the title here for KCM Season 3 2024. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We've really enjoyed this season so far, especially Week 6. That will go down Yep. in history as one of the greatest weeks of KCM ever but there's still more great games to come semi-finals will be starting next week don't miss out on it make sure to hit the subscribe button follow along in this journey guys uh, go down into the description as well first link is over uh, will take you over to KCM's channel you can give him a like make sure that he knows that we appreciate uh, the english coverage of this amazing tournament that's it for today thanks for watching we'll see you next time thanks guys